and we're live. You ever see those South American uh, peoples, they, they find their skulls and they did this thing where they wrapped leather bands around their skull to elongate them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen like that. The next they, they find the skulls. So like like, like you do a shoelace alien. on your finger almost and like like mm. like like bands of leather like like you you wrap the leather tightly around the skull and then you it wet <laughs> and then it squeezes and it's left on there this isn't something you do in a day this is like a, a a lifetime effort to make their skulls elongate and so nowadays what people will do i think it was the anasazi people will find these skulls and they think that it's one of those like alien conspiracies they're like oh uh. look Here's what some people say, ah, this is an alien human hybrid, but then they just do DNA, right? They're like, no, <laughs> what this is, the aliens were coming down and teaching the Anasazi to do things. And the Ana Anasazi were trying to make their children look like the aliens, which were their gods. And that's that, that so that, that those are, you can watch, you watch a couple of those and you'd be like, maybe, <laughs> maybe. They're also the same people who like put the stones out in the like the the, the planes, like in that in, in those patterns that look like mm -hmm. birds and animals. And they're like, you can't see. They had no way to ever look at this incredible artwork they made unless they were in the sky. And you're like, <laughs> What's a goddamn good point? What the fuck? Why were they making those giant birds with stones uh, and shit? Because they had that. coned I themselves it, retarded. If I had, <laughs> let's it's say like, man, that a I, lot of our population is blind and dumb. <laughs> Why are we doing this? <laughs> you can make things without going to the sky to see. If you told me, Woody, <laughs> I want you to mow your name into the yard, I could do it. Yeah. Well, also, like, <laughs> if you're sitting around doing yeah. absolutely nothing all the time except just like basic life things and you like sit around it like in a circle at night with some friends and like take some mushrooms you're like you know what i want to do let's take a stone out in the middle of fucking nowhere and 150 years from now people are gonna be like how the fuck did they do this like <laughs> it's aliens like, that's a great idea dude as soon as this idea. headache leaves i'll be with <laughs> right? yeah. i have a i have a friend who's been maintaining morning, a dead spot that says his name and it, it, kyle o is who he is anyway he has his name and his last name with Roundup in his yard, and it's been over a year now. He's waiting for Google Maps to update. <laughs> he desperately wants that thing to be on Google Maps, and he's he's a paramotor friend, so you see it when he flies too. It's kind of honey. Cool. If this ho cool. yard has to look like shit for the next three Christmases, <laughs> I'm like, honey, it's going. To <laughs> She's, she must be tolerant. He's uh, look at look at this skull. Look it's look, look how devotion. hardcore they went. Because like I, I know I described it, but. You don't get a good sense of just wow. how far they went unless oh. you see it. It's nuts. They look like Dude, those, bro. like, there's a movie, is like space balls <laughs> where they have, like, oh, the cone heads? heads? Yeah. Cone heads, yeah. Yeah, that Dan Aykroyd thing. That, yeah, that was an SNL sketch that turned into a fucking movie. That had Chris Farley in it. That's actually what Marge Simpson's skull looks <laughs> like. <laughs> she, just, she has very short hair. It's just like a <laughs> dent. <laughs> Man, like, I always wonder how stuff like this catches on. Like, was a, the son of a king born once or the tribe <laughs> chieftain and he had like a long head and he's like, my son is not going to get bullied at school. <laughs> you all have to make your children. We're making this like normal. This. <laughs> I, but yeah. things get, because I, I, I instantly started searching for ridiculous stuff that we do and I landed on circumcision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is ridiculous <laughs> that we still do it. But like, and you know me, I'm not a fan of it, but this is, I'd much rather be circumcised than be walking around hitting the, my forehead on, you know, the top of the doors. <laughs> on the, hut, the archway. Maybe their huts yeah. have arched doors. and they, It makes perfect sense. That would be hilarious. <laughs> like the way doors look when a cartoon character bursts through them. <laughs> it's just the cone. <laughs> There's more room for their brain to grow. Like, yeah, but like not correctly. Like what if like, they have an incredible sense of smell? But like, <laughs> but like no ethics. <laughs> they, they, they lose any sort of ethics. <laughs> no, there are so many like machines like that that that, that as humans out. we make just for fuckery, right? Like I saw that English guy who's got that Iron Man suit he built. He's basically got jet engines on his hands, and really? he's just like <sighs> he's going thirty miles an hour, flying around a field and like landing at will, and it looks it looks like, like tactical. It, it, I uh -huh. guess it's black and it has like shoulder pads and shit. It, and they were calling it an Iron Man suit. But then I think about those guys in Dubai who are jetting around. Yeah, and they're like powered wingsuits. I, I, I saw that it, this kind of leads me to my, my next little topic. And it's about like, I wonder if like 
the a- if, if there are intelligent aliens out there, like, did they engage in this kind of fuckery? Like, is this a thing that's unique to the mammalian brain on this planet? Is this a thing that's unique to just the primate brain on this planet? Is this a thing that's unique to just the Homo sapien that we have this thrill-seeking thing? I hope and hope they do engage in fuckery, up, and, and that's this, how they this find thing this. that wants to win. Like, like they don't do, come they, in these go, giant yeah. spaceships from Independence Day. It's just a couple of space surfers zipping around on their little boards, <laughs> like dude. I told Earth. you not to put that much kryptonite in there. <laughs> <laughs> you like, shot well, us all I, the way to the Milky Way. Fuck. <laughs> if they These were like a super people. advanced civilization and like some paper boy like got off course and showed up in his like hovercraft, like if I were that paper boy and I noticed a civilization that I knew I could dupe, <laughs> I would just go down there and be like, do, 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 do. And like I've come to speak with your leaders and like anybody on that guy's home planet are like, they're talking to fucking Marvin. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Marvin? He's the paper boy loser. He can't even do calculus in his head. Like, like, and then if you, you think about it, shit. that you scenario, know, if you think about it, that scenario makes a lot more sense uh, to explain Jesus Christ than him, you know, actually being a, a magical baby that God himself created, right? That it was some paper boy who, who crash landed here and was like, oh, well, yeah, water to wine, uh, whatever. But, <laughs> but like, I, I, if you could get me out of here, that'd be great. I really want to go back to my dad. Uh, well, he's he's God. He he kind of created everything. That's how you think of him. He's in the sky. <laughs> I got to get back home. to him, though. That's yeah. my point. Um, well, yeah, you guys just get along with each other. Why are you always fighting? Look, look, peace, love, harmony. Like, this isn't hard. Come on, guys. But really, I want to go back to my father. And then they, they fucking nail him up in the cross. He's like, what the fuck have I got myself into? <laughs> like, maybe that's what happened. What did they think I said? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I told you not. So, so furious. I saw that, I, I saw that Anonymous, it, it was report. I, someone said WikiLeaks said, but I don't think that's true. When WikiLeaks said something, I believe it more aptly than I would if Fox News said it. I, I don't think w- WikiLeaks is in the, the habit of releasing fake stories, are they? Like, has that ever happened? They that, like WikiLeaks said a thing and then it came out that, like, no, that's a fabrication or a falsehood. Or a falsehood. I can't think like, that doesn't that happen. Happening. So when WikiLeaks says something, I, I kind of believe it. But this was anonymous. Anonymous claims that they have hacked information that proves that NASA um, uh, is aware of the existence of extraterrestrial life. Mm. So that was the story that came out yesterday, I think it was. I, I don't so buy that, that. Is it intelligent life? Do we know that? Flat, like period, after what I said. And you know that leads me to have that whole conversation. Oh, did they find one single fossilized cell in a rock that, you know, right. it's from somewhere? Or did they find like the correct amino acid signature? Or did they find like a silicon life form that's like nothing that would or even exist wave. on our... Or a radio wave. Did they find like a, a, a oh, yeah. binary signal from another fucking uh, world that can be decoded and read and, and interpreted in some way? Like all of those things would be interesting. Um, I don't think that's a, that. I don't think NASA would hide life in space <clears throat> just because, like they they get so much they're, funding they're, if they do. Yeah, their <laughs> thing is always like we we can't even afford to build another two billion dollar rocket, beep, 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 and they're like we need your money, and like all they'd have to release to be like, hey, fucking space lizards, who's who's gonna become a Patreon? And then they'd be like, oh yeah, well I guess I'll give my fucking five dollars a month as long as I get exclusive lizard space lizard picks. Like that's. That's exactly what would happen. That would be that would be their best <clears throat> move ever. Is if they revealed there was life, suddenly everybody in the world, for the most part, would be on board with like, all right, well let's let's, let's spend a little more money and see what the what this is, you know. I I would definitely so so I, I think it would change my my out view, my point of view on a lot of things. It would prove what I believe because I believe that there is life. I don't believe there's necessarily intelligent life that's ever been here, and I, I because of the vast distances. And it's not something that I've come up with. It's just like that's what all the smart people say, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, so I don't know about that, but like there could totally be some sort of like fishes or tadpoles swimming almost, around in one of those warm yeah. oceans that exist in our own solar system on one of those moons, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like there has to be life out there, right? There's just so many planets, so many suns, so much space. There's got to be life out there. There's probably intelligent life out there. I just feel like if there's a one in a million chance of a planet sustaining intelligent life, well, there's millions and millions of planets, so there's intelligent There's just life. enough planets. It just yeah. seems like there's so goddamn but many. With Kyle, too, where he says, I don't think intelligent life has come to visit us. And, and I agree with that. And vice versa. Yeah, it's just, it. although, you know, Think about like how quickly we've advanced, you know, like like, like uh, traveling from one continent to another not not very long ago was that was also probably uh, thought of the same mm-hmm. way. If you told if you told some 
guy in the year 80 who just built the Colosseum, this incredible thing that like, yeah, um, we need you to, to cross that ocean. No, 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 not that little pond you call the Mediterranean, the Atlantic. You mm-hmm. got to cross the Atlantic and you got to go over there to another. He's, no, that's no one will ever cross the great ocean. <laughs> you know, like, like maybe it's just a matter of um, a, a couple more hundred years of human evolution. You know, it seems like yeah, um, I, I, I look right now and think, man, the people 500 years ago missed a lot of amazing, cool stuff. The things we're doing now would blow them away. Yeah. That could very well be what people think of us in a few yeah. hundred years. That of or course, their cell that- phones just get bigger. Uh, and then, the, but 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 then, if that's Both true, there, there's the thing. It's like, why has no one visited us yet? Like, are are we? It, it, and and there's a bunch of reasons that could make that happen. Like, maybe there's some sort of Star Trek system, like a Prime Directive, where they don't mess with our with little middling civilizations that haven't risen to the level of interstellar travel. Like, like they don't want to mess with our uh, our evolutionary path and throw their or baggage it could be on us. That we're just the most like that. You know, all these other planets. That we're discovering of like, hey, that one could maybe have life, I guess, perhaps. I don't know. It's not a rocky piece of shit moon. So there's that. Like, we don't, because we don't have a, a sense of perspective because we don't know any living things in any other planets. Like, what if it is that Earth really is like the fucking best possible setup for this to have worked out? Like, there were tons of petri dishes all over the place, and ours is the one. That's gotten the furthest, like with internet that's the cool and with thing planes about that. and shit. Like, who knows? That might be it. There's like, is it more likely that that's the case, or that there's super advanced Rick and Morty's out there? Like, I both both of them seem equally implausible. That's almost. the cool thing about those radio telescopes. I didn't really understand how they worked for a long time, but 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 it's about the spectrum of light that they're capturing, and and so if if something is a certain color, it's because it's composed of a certain element and, and certain elements, and so they can tell by looking at something what it's mm-hmm. made out of. So they, they they have these things called um, what um, the the planets that are like Earth that are the the correct size that the gravity would be Class would M be similar. Planets. Well, in Star Trek they call them that. <laughs> yeah, um, I know. Yeah, I, I like that. Right? Yeah, I think in I, science they call them Earth-like. <laughs> yeah, they, these Earth-like planets that are the, the, the that are in that uh, Goldilocks uh, uh, oh, zone. Yeah. Uh, oh, far, we've all far, heard. We're all yeah. Where uh, where liquid water? <laughs> oh, they're crazy. the correct distance from their star, so that liquid water can exist. Uh, but there's so many of them. They, they just announced they found like 15 more, right? Like they're they're constantly finding them with the with the new telescopes that they've got. What if, they don't even need water? what if other forms of life are like like drinking methane gas or something and they're not that's, even like corporeal beings they're like you know uh, in the ether somewhere well, like when they gassy. talk about silicon life Gross. forms like like that, that that's what they're that's what they're suggesting but I, I like the idea that, that that they wouldn't even have uh, like corporeal forms that they would either be uh, like uh, like in some sort of a uh, just an energy field. You know, like charged we even particles of them gas. As lives at first, we'd just be like, "Oh yeah, our tricorders are picking up weird shit." It turns out those are sentient beings. Yeah, that happens all the time in Star Trek. They'll they'll they'll, they'll think it's like a uh, mm-hmm. a nebula, a gas nebula, like a bunch of charged gas particles, and they'll be like, "Yeah, shoot them with the the proton beam number one." And they're like, "Oh shit, sir, we killed them all!" And it's just like <laughs> it turns out the gas things were alive. They or call it gassing, and it's sweeping yeah. across the country in every <laughs> high school. Only now, NASA scientists are revealing that this gas is actually a form of extraterrestrial life. That explains <laughs> the extreme high. That is what you're describing, Kyle. <laughs> and we, oh, but what if we genocided a whole alien race? Like, just get high on it. I hate those people who are like, oh, I'd love to have lived in this time and that time. It's like, are you serious right now? Like, like, like you wanted to live in a... It wasn't what if the time is ago? future? In the future is always the, the best bet. Yeah, the future is going to be awesome. Like, 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 if you go far enough forward, it gets real bad. But then if you keep going farther, it gets real good again. It's, it's certainly my, the way I look at it. Like there might be some bad days in the future, sure. but there's going to be some great days. There's going to be space exploration and faster than light travel and and and, and all sorts of cool things. Dis- dis- diseases will be eliminated. Like it's going to be great. But you go back just like a hundred fucking years, yeah, two hundred years, and they're burning witches. They're burning witches. And all it takes to be accused of a witch is for the other girls at school to be jealous of your hair or something like Look that. Look up any stats about the rate of witchery and you'll see they, you know, they've only increased. 
since we stopped doing this. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, eventually it seems like the future will collapse. Like the planet will decide to say fuck you or something like that. You know? ah, that shit's cyclical. Like, like I said, there's going to be some bad times, but it, it's always going to get better. It's always going to get better. I saw Rogan talking about how uh, there are some people who believe that all the alien sightings, especially those that we've had recently where there are actual like fighter pilots talking about seeing these objects that are that are traveling at speeds that are not possible by a human or anything like that there's some people who think that think that those are time travelers which people don't aliens. think that aliens have visited here like are do because i can't imagine you guys don't think that aliens have visited here um so by aliens you mean intelligent life in a spacecraft came observed us and left yeah I'm not. I, I, I would bet. That. I would again. I'm. Mean, I'm a gambler, so I'd like to bet a lot of money that that's happened. I. I, I think that. <laughs> I think that. I think that the odds. Okay. Of that, how would you like? Be. How would you prove it? Well, there's no way to quantify it. Well, you drag yeah, one I mean, of the I don't live too out. far from. I don't live too far from Area 51. Okay. Right. And I do know people. I so I remember one guy, and I. I can't name him or whatever, but he like he used to work at Area 51, and he said, "I can't confirm or deny." Like that, I've seen alien life and aircrafts being worked on in Area 51. Like, there's so much evidence. I think it's almost overwhelming at this point. If you really go down the rabbit hole, and not the crazy rabbit hole of like these weirdos that like saw something in the woods, but when you talk about you know people that worked in this environment, like that were actual uh, you know military or something like that, talking about all the documents and things they've seen all the way back from like. The 30s 40s and 50s bob lazar mm -hmm. is the best piece of evidence yeah. bob lazar okay. is a perfect example like word. i mean he's not lying who's yeah. bob lazar yeah. for the audience Kyle? uh bob lazar was a uh, a guy who who claims he worked at a, a part of the area 50 51 um base and uh some of the interesting things about bob lazar is he talked about this uh this element way back in the 80s when he came forward this story at the time the element was only theorized it's now uh, on the periodic table he's and he said that uh he saw nine spacecraft um one at least one of which had been part of an archaeological archaeological dig but they had found this thing it had been here for a very long time some of them huh. were crashes and uh he, he has a lot of there uh, another thing that he spoke about is the biometric scanner that that was used to gain entry into the base and it, it explained that it's your hand goes on to it and actually measures fingertip length in relation to the bones in your hands and at the time in the 80s everybody was like biometrics aren't a thing yet we don't believe you you're just make that's as much gobbledygook as little green men that you're talking about but now there's photographs of the exact device that he described um things like his his um <clears throat> his education has been erased his uh his social security number is gone and you got to think that like during the time where he came forward it was the 80s everything was literally there was literally a paper trail when we talk about a paper trail now mm -hmm. we mean data we mean things and servers that that are kind of hard to actually get rid of because there's so many duplicates across the internet you know the streisand effect alone we've seen how it's hard to get rid of a fucking meme now mm -hmm. but back then you could just delete someone's identity by going to a couple of different uh fo folders taking the papers out and tearing them in half and now this guy's education is gone they claim that he, he didn't work at these bases but there are registries with his name on them um there, there's a lot of evidence to support the fact that he was there you listen to him talk he's clearly a very well educated guy mm -hmm. and uh and he said that he saw flying saucers in there and that he was part of the team that was working to try to understand their propulsion system which he claims was a gravity manipulation system powered by this uh this element that i referred to earlier really the only thing that guy. seems kind of like up in the air with it is i feel like if aliens that are advanced enough to get here and have shit like a gravity propulsion system like would they crash? Like, because if, if you're that advanced, it seems like they could just easily come take a peek at us and then leave without our, you know, puny technology being able to get a peek at them. Yeah. Well, if you yeah. think about how many, if, if you, well, that's just a question of numbers, right? If they've done, let's say, for example, a million trips, the odds are that some of those trips may have had some complications, you know, occasionally. They're not just like likely, unlikely to be completely perfect, you know, and there's been, you know, there was the one crash, what was it, what the hell, Roswell or whatever it was called? Yeah. Way back when, there's that one. And there was a recent crash. I, this one, this one is interesting. It's a YouTube video of these kids in Australia who all, all kids that are like six, five, six, seven years old, all way too young to be able to lie this effectively. They all collectively were asked one by one what they just saw. 
They, they describe a man in a spaceship. They describe the typical, you know, alien look of a guy that, you know, you know, we, uh, we, we simulate with the, with, with what aliens look like. So either a, this was some sort of hoax game, you know, thing where some guy did this, came in a ship and was trying to create this, or like these kids clearly saw something, whether it was an alien or whether it was a fake, they saw something. There's just no way that that didn't happen. And again, like it could be a hoax, but I just think there's far too many, um, there's far too much evidence out there already that the government knows stuff that, uh, if you, you ever see unassigned, I think it's called on Netflix. Mm, no. That's one that goes down the rabbit hole too. All starting from Roswell till now, you know, and to go aside with Bob Lazar also has a uh, Netflix special, I think, too, yeah. about his journey. See, this is the kind of shit Trump should be tweeting, like mm. photos, evidence for the rest of us. That'd be Dude, pretty. Tough. I thought selfie. If aliens were real, selfie. <laughs> Trump, <laughs> Get a load of this. The Trump yeah. would tell <laughs> us. Like, These it, are Melania's it, people. Also, I could imagine a world where, like any other president, Obama, W. Clinton, et cetera, doesn't like immediately go like, are they are aliens thing, right? I want the inside scoop. But Trump would on day one. I feel like that was his top priority. Like, tell me about the little green men. You guys were saying that there wasn't a deep state. It's deeper than you know. You know, the, the, get a load of this. And just a photo of him and his fat golfing ass standing in front of the <laughs> With the fish. red hat on. <laughs> <laughs> Put the red hat on an alien. Again. <laughs> My friend Nurgle, Nurgle made me this driver. Look at it. <laughs> thousand yards every time <laughs> that's how i want to imagine that the space force thing happened is that they're like president trump we do have to show you something i know it's day one <laughs> but this is tradition he's like jesus fucking christ we don't have anything against these guys do we do you even have laser guns or is that a myth is that a hollywood night like and then he then he started the space force the space well force. he thought stealth like he thought stealth meant that like the ship is invisible I, he, like he said that many times where he actually thought like, you know, we have the stealth technology where he d described it as though it would be completely invisible. I, I have to believe that I, I'm not at the Trump. I'm, I'm sort of not a Trump person, but I have to believe that was like a misinterpretation. Like he might have said or, that, but it, like he didn't mean it. Or he, he said multiple times that he shouldn't have. Shouldn't have. <laughs> Maybe they were like, Mr. President, don't tell them about the invisible ships. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> We stealth. We use the word stealth. Don't talk about the the fucking invisible ship you program. You see a man in a sitting position zooming through the sky. <laughs> <laughs> like the you know, old Fantastic Four, like, like, Wonder like, Woman in the, the DC comics. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Just I'm in the bathroom there. of the Wonder Woman. Jet. <laughs> oh, have you seen that yeah. cartoon yeah, where she yeah, goes yeah. to the bathroom in the I invisible think that's ship? Guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's fucking funny. Yeah. They, I don't know. I've never really delved too much into the alien thing, like in Roswell. I, I, I genuinely don't know. It seems like it, maybe I don't buy that they've been here, but they definitely exist. Right. People definitely smarter than me have opinion. said that it's almost a mathematic impossibility, right? There's this many stars, and if this many stars have, make it up, 10 planets, and mm -hmm. it turns out one in a thousand of those planets is habitable like ours. There's just so many that... Some of them have to have followed our. It would, it would be trajectory. pretty arrogant to think, in the universe being as big as it is, infinite, that we are the only planet that has any yeah. form of like, like you know, life. That's it's just. But it's if almost, that was the scenario, an, an that's what they would think. It would be like looking at a forest and be like, "You think there's any birds in any of those trees?" Yeah, yeah, probably birds in lots of them. Well, we can't really see them from yeah, here. Yeah, we'll point them all out. And it's like, well, yeah. what about this tree? No bird in this tree. That's one tree. It's a forest. I, I think there's definitely intelligent life. I think there's people like us out there with like a bunch of like fucking octopus limbs or something like that, wondering if we exist or maybe they've been here and they're like, have you, have you been to the monkey planet? Those guys are ridiculous. I, I would just hope <laughs> that if it ever did happen where aliens showed up, that we're the taller and sexier group. I hope we don't make that it That would asshole. suck if it's like, yeah, we are coming from planet Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> There's Just a group of those beautiful people. Beautiful with six foot ten. <laughs> they call them the tall whites. Have you heard of the tall whites? Google yeah, the that. Grays, the the tall, tall whites white. is a thing, which is they're, they're an alien crew that come from that area, the Scandinavians. So you're like, what you're describing is actually a thing. In oh, addition I, to the little green ones, they've got yeah. the tall whites who I only supposedly them, walk among yeah. us. I only want them to show up if they're uglier than we are. They can be smarter, that's fine. But I don't want an alpha male group of Icelandic looking guys coming and, and <laughs> you don't want a bunch of Thors 
Like no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. all the posting. My biggest fear would be that our leaders made us look foolish. Like 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 what like like wouldn't you be okay. on pins and needles if like they if they if they actually showed up and let's just pretend they're gonna land in the United States? I don't know. And they're like, all right, bring us your leader, and we're all like, <sighs> yeah, about all right, that. Let's talk about this. Do you <laughs> mean um, our technological leader? Because just we got send this him guy Oprah. Musk. I don't know. Oprah, right? just send him Oprah. Here's our leader. You know, I don't know. Do you mean like maybe um, the leader of the NHL? Because we've got a couple of good old boys from Canada, and but if you have to be like, Mr. Trump, they uh, the visitors they want to see you, like like right. you, Trump instantly uh, leads with this bullshit over macho handshake, and we're like, fuck, he's jerking the alien around, <laughs> he's tentacle. pulling him over, <laughs> he pulls the lid off, he's like, ah, oh, <laughs> Jesus, Trump. <laughs> I feel like if, if aliens are advanced enough and they got here, they'd like look at us the way we look at animals in a zoo almost, where they'd be like, yeah, these these people are hilarious. Look, look, they got little atom bombs like we had 30,000 years ago. Not like, even aliens in a zoo, like termites crawling around, you know? Like, yeah, there's a couple airborne ones, but they're mostly land. They have land bound. They have no, mm -hmm. they, they, they kind of work as a society, but they're essentially idiotic. And this is basically nothing but what I've learned from movies, but. I feel like any aliens showing up here, they wouldn't be nearly as interested in what we're doing and more interested in like, oh, fuck, this is resource rich planet material. See, you know, I don't believe gonna, that either. Take that. I, I don't believe the whole thing about that, that they would be here for our resources because I feel like if they've got that technology, technology, they can just create things like water out of oxygen. Well, the theory, hydrogen. so the theory about why they're Impossible. here, why they're visiting is because of our nuclear capability. And according to this one thing that I saw, they're, they're worried about what we can do to the solar system and the universe that can affect their planet if we go crazy and have a nuclear war here. So like that's supposedly, they're worried about us because we're a hostile, crazy people. This is how where- would, uh, How would hmm. our nukes like fuck up a different planet? I think supposedly it can have an effect on throwing things offline or whatever, you know, when it hits, when it goes through the atmosphere. And mm. I don't know, I'm not a freaking scientist, but, you know, they say that it could have an effect on the, re this is what uh, one, some supposed guy who worked in the military said he got a message from an alien. And this was the reason mm. they supposedly. I believe that guy. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> let's yeah, get that my, guy on my the thought show. process would be like, <laughs> like, like, if they're actually visiting, then there's got to be a reason why they haven't landed and been like, hey, we're here. It's got to be because they think we're assholes. Yeah, and, and they don't think it. we're ready to we're even boring. talk to them. Yet. That was my, my or, personal no, theory. Is that we're not boring, bad. though. Come on, you know that they wouldn't Whoa. think we're we're fucking interesting. No, I find termites boring. I find uh, earthworms seen... boring. I find all these things that are light years below me to be uninteresting to watch for more than a they few don't years. have termites culture. Don't have but... shit like bum fights. We have culture, you know, <laughs> like, 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 I don't think it's, I, I get the, the, the comparison between a higher, a uh, higher being and, and termites. And, and I, I get that, but we have culture, right? We have comedy, we have entertainment. We have a lot of things that I feel like we would be interesting. Like, like, even if you found like, if we found some like early hominids on fucking Pluto and we were like, oh, they, they, they eat their own shit, but God Damn, are they some good comedians? Like, look at this. Look at this slapstick. They invent slapstick in the year 40. Like, like, I hear you, but I feel it. like their comedy would exist on such a higher plane that they wouldn't consider ours funny. You know, like, when I look if at If they don't life, like cum jokes, I don't want them coming. Mm -mm. Yeah, no. I don't want them here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I hope there are aliens, and I hope that someday that, that we find out that they're real and we get to talk to them. I just hope they're friendly. <sighs> I hope they're friendly too. I hope they don't want to like turn us into some sort of slave labor or uh, yeah. or, or like eat us or like something. Wouldn't be surprising. Like, it's kind of what like well, as a society, we do to animals now. So if they saw us as animals, they'll put us in factories and use us like in Matrix and use us as batteries to power. What whatever. if they wanted to eat us? I have this hope yeah, why not? that we're That's amongst bad. the least useful slave animals on the planet, right? First they get the horses, then they get the sheep and the goats and all sorts of shit way better than us, lions and bears. No, because we would make a great pet. We can use tools and shit. Like they we, can just well, use I guess. We're I also know. the best long distance runners on the planet. They put us on some big hamster wheels, just grind it out, boys. But when it comes yeah, to I dragging we shit around, we're terrible. inverse formula, but let's use these uh, <laughs> runners <laughs> <laughs> to, to get our ship back home. <laughs> that's that's the that's literally the premise of that stupid fucking John Travolta movie that's based on the L. Ron Hubble, uh, Hubbard novel. Um, um, Dianetics? That. 
Um, yeah. It's a different one. That's the one they based their religion on. It's it's one of his actual science. It's it's one of the ones that were science fiction, not the real religious text. Yeah. <laughs> Just my mistake. You've got to separate the two. Clearly, they have okay. not. The fact that he's a science fiction writer has nothing to do with the fact that he in, invented his own religion. Does anybody here believe in ghosts? No. Oh, they, no. they got to be real. Sorry, it was only three people died, but they they were definitely visible from the street. So it was not. Well, that's not zero. Bad, so but, yeah, I said non-zero. <laughs> <Yeah>. Covered <laughs> covered myself. Do you, Kyle, believe, do in you believe in ghosts? I think Absolutely you do. not. Okay. That's what I was like. Is that a consistent position, PK? It's a hundred percent consistent position. I've spoke about demons before, but but I do not believe in ghosts. <laughs> but aliens difference. are real. Aliens yes. might be period. real. I don't Ali know if the aliens, aliens are real. Period. Period. I, I believe there are extraterrestrial life forms. I just don't know if they've come here if they do come here on a regular basis and rape us. They don't come here and rape us, probably. But probably somebody's I'd be okay that. Perfect. Explain that. Exactly what you said. This is this is what I always tell people whenever they I, I tell them I'm afraid of aliens. They're like, you're afraid of aliens. And I'm like, all right, let's do this. Let's get like the world's top 25 scientists in a room and be like, all right, I'm addressing the room. Does anyone here believe in vampires? They all laugh. They all laugh. Of course, there are no vampires. What about uh, <laughs> werewolves? Any werewolves? Anybody believe in werewolves? No, there are no werewolves. Ghouls, goblins? No, no. Do you think maybe aliens come here every now and then and molest people? Almost certainly not. That's the best <laughs> answer you're going to get. You're not going to get an absolutely positively not out of every one of them. Like now, here's the question. Gonna, you're going to get a probably not. If you had the option to be uh, penetrated by an alien, have intercourse with an alien, but he's, yes. he's having intercourse with you, oh. and you can have it on film if you have the option, yes, I want this to happen, or no, yes. what would you choose? Yeah, dude. I think about I'd the film... books you could write. Wait, is this like straight sex with an alien, or am I getting fucked by the alien? You're getting. This is. Uh, you're getting. This I is think pretty you're much getting gay sex. Yeah. Yeah. I you have to, are we talking about alien pussy? Right you don't now? get to be James no. T. Kirk. No, we're not talking. We're not talking about. You don't get to be the hero. We're not talking story. about. And it's, it's filmed, so you have proof that it happened. Well, I don't want it to be filmed. Good God, you're you're not selling me with oh, the film. Think about the, the movies you could star in, the a books movie. you could write. No, but that's the only podcasts if, you could be. You're on. listening to a man who's made fourteen thousand videos. He's got content on the mind. <laughs> Trevor, <laughs> I'm just. Trevor's if gonna I could be like, get fucked by an alien. You could be in textbooks, Kyle. Hey, YouTube, outlive. Here's my breakdown of space age. First of all, <laughs> and, and, like, 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 there's no, no he's, way. He's, he uses a condom. He uses 100%. a space condom. Okay. Yeah. Well, you've sold me. You've sold, you've me, sold with space me with space condom. Imagine the TikTok he videos also takes, of you he penetrating. Also takes Bluetooth. Oh. Oh. Maybe we could work that me. into an ad. Maybe we could make some money that way. <laughs> Just keep airing the film week after week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle getting ass fucked no, by an alien. Stop playing that film like that. It's uh. <laughs> Everywhere I go, you know, it was in a Super Bowl ad. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm having nightmares about that night. <laughs> Extraterrestrials need to get hard too. Blue chew. Yikes! No, I don't think I want to get raped by an alien on film for everyone to see. Preferably mm. not. No, no it, it wouldn't so. be aggressive. It, it loving. Oh, you're consenting. You, you're I think that makes to it consent. worse. Sweet, Kyle. Makes it worse. He's taking his smart <laughs> mouth as well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that literally makes it worse. I would rather have a there violent alien rape you. than a, than a tender one. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know. I... But back to my point, that's why I'm afraid of them. You ask, you ask those scientists, like, the best answer you get is almost certainly not. You're never going to get a definitive, absolutely positively no out of all of them. There's going to be like a, a considerable amount of like the top scientists in the world who know their shit who are like, I mean, maybe. This is plausible. That's because yeah. it's like, it's, it's, uh, st there's, the universe is so vast, it is statistically improbable that we are the only sentient, intelligent life forms. And if you have the capacity at some point to travel fast as or faster than the speed of light, we're not going to detect you with our like no ad radar, the, the, like Santa tracker, right? You're going to come in the dead of the night and you're going to rape me and you're going to get your data and you're going to leave and nobody's going to know. I'm going to yeah. seem like a crazy, even with video evidence, they're going to be like, Doctor that's the Hitch. thing. Like, that's the thing about video evidence now. Like if you had a video in 1994 of an alien raping tucker it would blow the world away they'd be like yeah. oh my god it's real if you showed that same video today they'd be like oh what are they trying deep to sell fake. deep fake what are they deep trying fake. to sell here is this is, is this an ad for condoms is this you're a right but i go the other way it, it seems like all these shitty alien photos and such came from the 90s they came from the 80s now that everybody has a camera in their pocket there has not been an explosion in alien observations yeah 
I mean, didn't there's all that military footage. Well, didn't we all talk that about military this? footage? There's like one debunked military video. No, that's didn't, not true. That I we saw. talked. It we talked about this last time I was on. I swear to God, because we uh, or maybe I didn't, but like they were just about to air the Fox. Was it Fox? Whatever the CNN, the the whole the 60 like minutes thing. Yeah, that's what it was. Sixty minutes. Sorry, where where they're like, hey, here's all the footage we have de or declassified from like 2004, and it was like IR video, et cetera. Like none of this was even remotely surprising to me. I'm like, yeah, dude, it's a UAV from it's from 2004. It's a 2007 tech UAV that they were testing out or something like that. I watched a guy on Reddit recreate it. He's oh, like, really? there's a light. This is a night scope. This is the particular scope that makes lights look like diamonds. And here to watch how it copied it over with the different Ooh. lenses. And and I was like, oh, this guy clearly has recreated this footage. The person who submitted it, I don't think is a liar. I think they believe they saw something, but this right. guy could explain it super right. well. That's yeah. a cool post. If you have, I mean, if you, I probably lost to the void, but like, it, but... yeah, because that, I mean, to me, I was like, it's a light particle, right? It's the, there's some weird light shit. And if it's not, it's some tech that the US military wants to flex to other people without overtly, re you know, being like, hey, here's what we got. Or it just gets seen, right? Like, like I remember, yeah. um, like, there was X Files episodes about, like, uh, the triangular shaped, uh, um, like, UFOs. And that was the F 117 project, you know, like, like, like way before it was uh, really before anybody, like, talked about it, before that was, like, unclassified. Like, like those F 117s were made in, like, the 80s. You know, like like so was the 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 B two bomber like like that's nineteen eighties tech, the the you know the uh, the the stealth fighter and the what's well, not a fighter but they call it one, all that stealth shit. I wonder what the what the cutting edge is now. Like, like, like wonder what we can't even imagine. Do you sure. Right, but do you think? I mean, because it's cool. The it's it's interesting that it's pretty much an unlimited checkbook, right? Like if you say, hey, we have the potential to turn. Yeah, and like uh, like this exterior coating to reflect radar, but also blend in on video too. It's like, all right, how much you want? Four, tr four, four billion, eight billion? How like what do we need to make Done. it work? Yeah. So, or anything with like fission and fusion, that stuff has to have like a practical application for for war to get funding from the DoD, even though they're actively researching it for like uh, fission. Um, infusion reactors to like generate power and stuff yeah and the, the interesting thing like the way no. it takes so long to like get a project done and then like, like the the chain of parts is so ridiculous with where, where like there are these um you, you know like, like the, the tech is moving so fast probably what the cutting edge right now that they're actually like flying and testing was made like 15 20 years ago like like, like the, the cutting edge of what they're actually using right now is probably like 10 15 year old tech at least I mean, look, look at our like highway system. Look how long it oh. takes to do that. Can you imagine what it takes in a military sense with all the checks and balances and everything? Zach, can you queue up that video? So the opening 15 seconds when we watch it together will show like 90% of what it is. And the rest is the process he made to figuring out exactly which scope and, you know, duplicates it. With audio, please. This UFO video does not show a pyramid. There's a triangle shape, but that looks exactly like an effect caused by a bright light being out of focus and a night vision camera with a triangular iris like this one. Yeah. Or triangular and lens cover. We could yeah. go on, but he just goes through his whole process of discovering how he figured out how it was made. And it's just a blinking light viewed through that lens that makes it look like a triangular spaceship. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. I just sort of, I see that kind of shit and I'm like, honest mistakes but not intelligent life why well, i'm just like <clears throat> my my be all end all here is like if you have the tech to traverse galaxies right then well, you certainly have the tech to avoid basic radar detection right or at least like you just don't bounce it your, back right yeah I mean, we just, almost have that tech yeah figure it out i mean you you have interplanetary intergalactic travel which is probably one of the great filters in the universe, right? If you hit that point, I feel like you're upper echelon civilization if there are people who can do that. So it's just, it seems implausible to me. It'd be like saying, uh, hey, we've got an RC car and they, ha they have a bunch of laser. It's an awful example. I'm going to stop it before I continue. 
Yeah, so the point is, like, I just, I don't see how you Imagine get detected. Imagine an RC car with lasers. <laughs> <laughs> you could never detect it. Sounds yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was, I saw where that was going. Point is, it's, it's just improbable that you would have that level of tech and not know how to deal with our level of detection. Because well, they would have already had our level of tech in the point. first place, yeah. The hundreds or thousands of years ago. So, I love watching yeah. these YouTube channels that break down, like, weird what if uh scenarios with like animation there was one um like like uh about alien invasion the other day it was really fucking good about like how long it would take and what would happen oh really um, in a scenario in which like the aliens didn't want to like nuke the earth or use some sort of mass just weapon of mass destruction like they want to colonize so they want to get rid of the the human beings uh it was really interesting i think they i think they settled on that it would because the aliens would have probably have like 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 0.9 percent light speed tech uh in the scenario that they used it they, they thought we would win the war in like 35 years or something like that uh it, because they would have to bring everything that they were going to like do their warring with with them in one shot and then they'd be li- a couple light years from home you know like 70 80 years from home meanwhile we would just be right here like breeding generation after generation of fighters to like to like oh, combat wow. them mm. it was an interesting like scenario it was fun Anything like that's fun to watch to me. I um I I was really let down by the Chris Pratt movie because I thought it was going to be cool like that, um the the one with uh, the Tomorrow War. Yeah, was, it was. Oh, I didn't call it ninety that. minutes long, and and I really enjoyed about ten or fifteen minutes of it. <laughs> I think it might have been two hours. It it seemed long to me. Are you about right though? Like there was a moment in there where the kind of like there was a I guess the relationship between him and the star on the ground. Uh, there are parts in there when it unfolded I enjoyed. Yeah, I don't know. I like like I like Chris Pratt too. It was just it felt cheap to me. And then I found out it cost like two hundred and twenty five million dollars or something like that. And then the aliens were dumb and that's interesting. I didn't they get beat the alien there. up at the end. Like they went hand to hand with the giant alien that, that in the be- <laughs> in the beginning a team of men with machine guns couldn't handle like a little one. And then at the end, like him and his decrepit old dad who's played by Schillinger from the Oz, you know, the J.J. Jameson from the Spider-Man movies. They literally, like, go hand-to-hand hand with that. the queen. They're like, they're like, like, fucking bring it on! And they just, like, beat up the queen. I know like, that you're right, but make it right for me. He had something that even the score, He right? didn't even have a knife. He had, like, a, one, of the, one of their spikes that they would shoot, like some dull, like, tusk that he's, like, oh, fighting but- with. Are you sure the tusk wasn't particularly effective against them? Like it was the it wasn't a magical thing tusk. that kills White Walkers. No, you know? no, it, it, it did level. not have a vibranium tusk or a, or, a, or anything <laughs> like that. He, that we're in the Marvel universe. He was, yeah, I mean, we might as well go to fantasy land because the idea of Chris Pratt beating up a giant monster with his bare hands, along with a seventy-year-old man in the Arctic, mind you, uh, or in Siberia, was just. It's like, come on, you're, give him a like. Have a part where he just happens to have a rocket launcher here. Like, maybe I'll right. believe that. What was the um the Tom Cruise movie with time travel that was very good? Uh, The Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah. So the bad guys in the Chris Pratt movie, they're alien type things. We're on the same level as the ones in The Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah. So like, you know, you could put I'll make up a number three hundred rounds into them, and they're still eighty percent fighting effective, and they have Ooh. seven more limbs to attack you. It's a real problem. You have to headshot them a lot. And, you know, the fact that you could, the idea that you hand-to-hand combat one of those, it's a non-starter. It's a non It's like fighting a, a, a lion. Like, like, these things are much scarier than a lion. But you would never, like, it, if, they, if they did that, if they were like, if they, right. actually the problem is lions. But uh, don't worry, Chris Pratt's going to fight one at the end. He's got elephant tusk. Get Chris, Pratt, <laughs> get, get Chris Pratt a fucking, like, elephant tusk and see how many, see how many lions he can fight. I'm guessing the answer is .01. It was Chris Pratt's dad, too, right? And like his it was dad. even worse. His dad doesn't add anything to it other than liability. He's so old. That, that, that character is literally like 70. Well, like, he could like, fly like, the plane. He was useful for that part. He, he, he owned a, a cargo plane that somehow <laughs> made it to Siberia without refueling. Yes. I don't know a lot mm. about aviation, but I don't <laughs> think a C-130 makes it from California to Siberia without refueling. It I does. No well, idea. actually, my... my, uh, my what do you call it? my cousin's <laughs> husband flies C one thirties? They certainly don't make it back. <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> fourth, uh, it looks like the range is what, what kind of nautical mile shit is this? Forty five hundred nautical miles max. Okay, it's not gonna make it, is it. No, I don't think they're gonna make it. So I think it's every, gonna be close. How many I nautical think... miles is California from Siberia? Talk about <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, how many? 
How many nautical miles from LA to Siberia? <laughs> Why did it autofill? Uh, 5,300. So oh, there you go. Make it. It was Parachute close. The last thousand. Even make it. the last thousand. And they're also carrying all that gear and people. Like the thing's loaded down. Like, like I bet that I bet the range you've got there is like an unloaded C-130. They got like eight people in there. All yeah. those ATVs. Where did they get the ATVs? They had snow cats and shit. Like, like, like there was so much in that well, movie. The Look, I get it. Capacity. <laughs> they could have brought golf carts and shit if they wanted. All I need is like for them to make shit make sense. I believed Lord of the Rings when the elf pulls out the Limbus bread. And he's, they're like, oh, yeah, like one bite can fill the stomach of a grown man and for, for a day. All right, so it's some magic shit. Yeah, exactly, magic shit. All right, I believe you. And this, at no point were they like, so where are we getting quarter million dollars worth of snowmobiles? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I cheap them in my C-130. <laughs> where are we getting all these weapons? We're in California, mind you. Where are we getting all this weaponry and ammunition that we're taking with us? Where San Diego's this? military base. They had C-4. They Oceanside. had C-4. It just just like like you don't have to like have like 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 I know a little bit about procuring C4 and about like getting weapons in California. You don't have to have my level of like knowledge about these things to be like, wait a minute. Where'd they get the C4? Be more realistic if they came from Texas. It would be a lot more realistic if they came from Texas. Of course, like like, yeah, no, it would. Did you guys like believe in monsters as a kid? Like, um and if so like what what got you what was the thing yeah. like forest ones was it ghosts because everybody can almost remember a time they like thought they saw something or like and some like i think kyle you've dealt with sleep paralysis before right no i no, I'm, I'm, I have. no. okay i mixed that up and you saw something spooked anyway i'll let you guys go i was always afraid of aliens because i watched so many shows about aliens and stuff and fox used to have these like i don't know if you remember the alien autopsy like special that fox played one night it was an hour long thing about an alien autopsy and they played an alien autopsy as if it were real um and i watched a lot of shit like that i watched fire in the sky i watched the x-files like i said and i was it was one of those things where like even when when you would speak to adults as a child like hey you know you ask them hey is the boogeyman real they'd be like fuck no of course there's no boogeyman but if you ask them about aliens every adult has to be like i mean probably not but like (laughs) I mean, honestly, we just don't know. You know, it's a big universe. You've seen Star Trek, and you're just like, fuck! That is not the answer I need right now. Your parents didn't just shut that door for you and say no? What, lie to me? No. That's what my parents did. I remember when I was like five, uh, I thought I was so cool in kindergarten because I was the only kid who I was for sure who knew that Santa wasn't real. Because I asked, I'm like, is Santa real? And I was like, in kindergarten, my mom's like, no, your grandparents bought you those. Oh, shit. I was like, oh. What a fun oh. childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have stuff that said from Santa? Yeah. Um, yeah. When I would so, see that on TV, I was like, oh, I people still really do that. I guess so the tradition, still do that. The tradition in my household <laughs> was on Christmas Eve, parents and relatives gave you gifts. So Christmas mm-hmm. Eve, like everyone would come over or we'd go to grandma's house and the gifts would come from people. Those were the people gifts. And then, but Christmas morning, when you woke up, Santa has come and he's brought you all the shit that's under the tree and uh, that, fun. i like that yeah and that would give dad time to like get up early and put the train set together or or the trampoline or whatever the fuck but any, uh, did you Can uh I, did you see an alien no i've never seen an alien or i would i'd have killed myself long ago that i mean did you so think terrifying. you saw one when you were a kid no i'm not stupid no you would not taylor be asked about <laughs> the monsters you thought were real yeah dude <laughs> I, i'm old so in the late 70s back when I was six or something, they bombarded you with this idea that there were monsters under your bed and in your closet all the time. And it wasn't like just your parents. Like like I learned to read at school and all the fucking books were about the monsters in your closet and under your bed and and people like coming to terms with the monsters who were, you know, like, I don't know, lining up to attack you at night and, and how kids learn to befriend the monsters who were in your closet and under your bed and, and all the things that you might do with them. Some, some <laughs> got killed by the monsters in your closet and under your bed. And some were able to work out some sort of treat. Only the ones who didn't learn to read, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was terrified of monsters like, in my closet it, and under my bed. I, like it, it was just everywhere. I, 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 it would work today if they hit you with enough of this like disinformation strategy about monsters in your closet under your bed. You, you might have your suspicions. The Sandy Hook scenario. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm like, industrialized it in Woody's closet. It's like 
Stick it stub 99, 99. <laughs> uh, you, you'll be sodomizing Woody tonight. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that watching Monsters, Inc. I was like, this is a mean-spirited business model. <laughs> <laughs> like, nobody's winning here. I guess the Monsters won, the, the, the green guy with the ghoulish face. Not yeah, Mike I was, was asking the other one. I was never actually afraid of any monsters because we had guns. And like, especially in the woods, because like I, I had spent so much time as a child alone in the woods with a rifle um, that, that like after a while, like, you're like, oh, I hear something. Oh, it's a deer. Let me just kill. It. All right. He's, he's dead. Like, like, like you'd see you'd see what all of the noises in the woods were up at 25 mm -hmm. feet in a tree spending like every like fall, you know, up in a tree every day. You, you'd be like, oh, OK, that's a coyote. That's a fox. That's, you'd see all the animals. The critters would come out at night. And you see, there are no monsters out there, probably. Are there uh, any woods noises that do concern you? Like, I mean, you mentioned coyote. That sounds a little scary. Uh, yeah, the scariest noise you can hear. You just hear woods. like, ah! <laughs> Close. <Yeah>. Close. <laughs> hear, hearing people in the woods is scary. Um, when mm -hmm. we were on our little survival trip in uh, Kurahi, we heard those people. And it was like, I don't like that. I don't like that. Like, like there's nothing out here that can hurt us. You know, like, mm -hmm. like, like. Literally, there's nothing in the Georgia woods that can hurt you. Like maybe a tick could give you Lyme disease, a <laughs> copperhead could bite you, and then we got to go to the emergency room that's 30 minutes away. But mosquitoes, people, people can Is do it? awful things. Yeah, oh, we yeah. had that. Like uh, we, one of my mates has got like 500 hectares up in the in the middle of nowhere, and we're like fucking around up there shooting and stuff like that. Then you hear like yelling and stuff, and you're like, okay, we're gonna get blasted here by hillbillies <laughs> like, who are these like we're in the middle of fucking nowhere like who are these have, like, <laughs> i couldn't even imagine how much 500 hectares is it, it, uh it's it's pretty fucking massive like you can <laughs> you can you can shoot like a 223 at like 45 degree angle and and it would it's probably it's still going to land in your in your I think it was still okay. uh, yeah yeah 10,000 square meters is a is a hectare i think how many yeah. acres is that yeah, that's what I'm looking at now. So uh, a hectare is two and a half acres. Okay. So 1,235 right. acres, Zach says. Thank you, Zach. That's a lot. That's quite it's, a, it, it, eh. it's a big place of land. I, I mean, it's not like it's not like cattle ranch huge. The, this is mm -hmm. like this is this is just for his cabin. Yeah, like, for sure. Not, like, it's a nice, like that's a lot for a cabin. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, that, that really yeah. freaks you out. Those demon things. That's so interesting. Yeah, because it, it, I'm reversed. It, it really did. Because and and, and Chiz, Chiz just typed this. He said Kyle is the man who said he thinks that there is a higher probability of angels and demons is existing over aliens. And here's my rationale behind that. Aliens are something that, by definition, should have some kind of material proof behind them. Like maybe we we'll get a radio signal or. Or, or, or they, they, they or we receive one from them, or, or we spot one, or you could okay. just, okay. You, you just, you could just go along the basis that the universe is so big that they would never get here anyway. So it doesn't matter if there are or not that they just couldn't have been here. So I'm willing to say the aliens are super, super duper unlikely um, to, to be visiting us. I think that's highly unlikely, cause just because of the size of the universe. I love um, that them black, for entertainment. The black purposes. science man taught me this. Mm -hmm. For entertainment purposes, I love aliens. I, I love alien movies. I love the. Yeah, I grew up watching the X Files. Um, so I, I've always been like, you know, I love entertainment around aliens. But I, I highly, highly doubt that, like, you know, tall, skinny, green, like black-eyed alien mm -hmm. men are, are, you know, walking around. But maybe like some bacteria or something somewhere. I could see that happening. I'm but you know, fully now here's now, that there's intelligent life somewhere, just not close as a to us. That, yeah, it's gotta be out <laughs> so, there. So that's what I believe. And 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 so I so that's firmly why I think no aliens are coming here. So anybody who's seen a little green man, man is manipulate being manipulated or they're crazy or they're lying. The reason I think that angels are angels and demons are more likely is because by definition an angel or a demon is some sort of they they live on a plane different from us, sort of a different they're a, a, a different dimension almost, which we know exists. Yeah, well, we don't and, know that dimension exists though. That... The black science man told me that we do, so I'm going I'm going with that. <laughs> he uh, so so I feel like it, by definition <laughs> these angels are demons, which could which are some sort of multi dimensional beings uh, by definition are are. are 
are impossible to prove or, or disprove. So, so maybe they do exist. Maybe so they're because floating you're not supposed like, to be able to prove that they exist, therefore they pro they, they could exist. Therefore, there is there is because you can't just dis disprove them. There is at least a minute possibility of their existence. Where on the other hand, with aliens, by definition, we should have evidence of them, and, and there is hard hard. No, we, we shouldn't like, have data evidence. No, the universe is so big. That, that's the point I'm trying to make. I'm sorry. That there's data there to consider based on the size of the universe that we just wouldn't encounter them. So based on both of those points, I think it's more likely that there's some sort of angels or demons in existence than there are little green men uh, like flying around. Like one of them Earth. was mainly just made up, though. Like Ma made up, yeah. But but I'm not I'm not saying like um, little cherubs with wings that that come from Jesus Christ. I'm talking about whatever someone actually saw one time and attributed to being an angel or whatever awful like i don't know energy being uh what about like genies? attack somebody like a should, genie do genies exist no way no that's because that's some fucking made up shit that's that's, that's like, the like exact well, i'm having same a hard thing. time figuring out what's made up and what's not how about leprechauns are they real uh no, I think I, Woody. I know. Wait, going back, I think Woody I made think, a very good point with the genie because it wasn't making think, a mockery of his point with a leprechaun. But the genie's <laughs> a good point. They believed in genies. They thought that was I a thing. Think, who believed in genies? I, I did. Think as a did. I tested several lamps. Just there's something wrong I with. Still, you. I test all. We know that I see, now. Just in case. So there's. I, I feel like every group of people in existence have always believed in spiritual beings, right? They've always believed that there are intangible beings that are floating around some sort of energy that interact with us. And, and, uh, do you think that that's a consequence of insufficient knowledge though? Cause if you were to go say 300 years ago, you could be like, well, it's, or I guess like a thousand I do think years that, ago, yes. like you could, we, we know we've known for generations that our health is determined by our four humors and how those are balanced. With the, oh, do we have enough yellow bile, enough black bile, enough blood, and enough mucus? I, like all, the four humors of the body. Like, oh, yeah. you have too much blood, throw a couple of leeches. Like, it's just a lack of information I just until eventually be... we can be like, oh, yeah, there are no wizards and demons and uh, angels. And I, I just know. want to be clear. I don't believe that there are angels and demons. I just believe that, that angels and demons existing is more likely than little green men existing. Now, I'll tell is this. It possible? I, I often little rub green the men are aliens. I know they are. That's what, what, I miss what no, Chris or said. aliens. Aliens. Alien beings like, like, you know, coming to Earth and visiting, that is much less likely than there being interdimensional, like, demons who have been plaguing mankind for years. Body, fucking Scientology is more likely than aliens actually visiting Earth, <laughs> like like at least I, I guess no. Science, no, no way. Because By definition, Scientology even is the most ridiculous thing ever because it does involve aliens visiting Earth. Yeah, yeah. see, <laughs> huh? Came full circle there. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> I'm just gonna make a point and uh, just debunk that real quick. Yep, doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Flawed Say logic this. all around. Uh, all right. As a, as a child, I often rubbed lamps, hoping that Robin Williams would come out, but it never happened. Oh. No. No, never, yeah, never Rob Rodman yeah. Williams, he might have come. Yeah. So there's that. I was always wanting the genie from Aladdin to just pay me a visit and be my friend, but he never came. I was going to talk about the fucking UFO like footage that, that that keeps coming out with from from like the Navy and the Air Force is really fascinating to me. I saw the um, one debunked one. The, it's green. There's there's so many. I, I don't know. Oh, okay. I, I don't know that anything got. I didn't know anything got debunked, but I I see like. You know, is there a video you can it. point to? There's there, lots of videos. There's like a a what, green, like a, a... So there's a green one. And yeah, it's through night vision. And there are triangles sort of moving around in, in like a weird way. And they pulse a little bit. And like it just doesn't look like anything we've seen. And the, the government came out and said it was a UFO, which doesn't mean aliens. It means unidentified flying aircraft or object. So... Uh, uh, the the internet sees it, and this guy is like, I know exactly what this is. This is unfocused bokeh. And he recreates it exactly. He's like, these are what stars look like when it's not focused. When the, I think it's called the iris of the camera is triangular. You know, they, they open and close it to change how much uh, the light is, you know, for the speed, whatever. And uh, he's like, when it's out of focus and it's triangular, all the stars look like um, triangles. Airplanes look like triangles. This one's blinking. That's because it's an airplane. And they even identified which plane it was, like based on like the time and location that it was shot, going by, blinking, and it's just an unfocused blinking triangle because that's what happens when you have a triangular iris. It was so pretty which, yeah, this is uh, this is from three days ago. This is a 
This some, is not something. the one I'm talking about, but carry on. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is some sort of flying object that eventually, I think this might be the one who, that disappears into the water at one point, like goes underwater and then comes back up. It's, uh, I don't know. They're following it with fucking aircraft, like like Air Force aircraft. Yeah, like, I, oh no, this, I, is, this is from the Navy ship. This is, yeah. That always adds a certain credibility to me when... um. It, it could you know be a Navy pilot or it could be even like a commercial airline pirate pilot. Like these are serious people at work. They're not rednecks drinking. Those, those guys who've been trained to look at, look at, look at like a radar signature or even like the, the, the like um, outline of a plane and identify it. Like, like, yeah. like th- those guys are like trained to do that. They look at the sky all the time. They know it's normal, you know? And, and so when it, like a, I'll just say a naval aviator says, this is something weird. Oh, well, that's something different than Woody at a campfire seeing something weird. Yeah, agreed, hundred percent. Or, or maybe hasn't just been some explained. Vi- or maybe just some video that gets uploaded, and you're like, "All right, who doctored this? How was this filmed? Where was it filmed? Like, is this even CGI? Like, what am I looking at?" But when you've got something that's got like, you know, it's from a a naval aircraft or ship or something, it's it definitely adds some credence to it. It'll be up to Congress to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> All right, we'll never know. Yeah, that's top comment. They're like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, <laughs> it's absurd. Well, I, I was looking at this um, report on this, and some research said that it, it's most of the triangular ones are the new version of the drone, the jet power drone that has stealth and is built in. It's invisible because it has a camera and it projects it projects what's above it below and what's so basically it's invisible to this human sight look it up it's called it's a next generation drone that's being launched off of naval carriers right now and he was talking specifically about that uh video where it comes in the water out of the water it was actually they're testing the the cell systems on this particular new drone it's a new camera it may be the icarus check out the maybe it's called the icarus um uh invisible drone or something uh that one I don't. This is the one I was talking about. The the most recent one I linked, and uh, I'll play it real quick. You can see on the screen, but people watching can this sort of blinking triangle, and then he shows what the night vision thing that it was recorded through looks like, and another way to create it. And he uh, he uses that equipment and makes more of it. But yeah, if it's out of focus and you have a triangular open like opening like that, um, you get you get this UFO image. So we'll see what comes of it. I don't know. I like. It's exciting to think there could be aliens. Visits. I hope, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, right? come on. Wouldn't it be great to meet somebody with a, with a flying saucer? I mean, come on. It's like a ghost. The, the, I mean, wouldn't you love to meet a ghost? Hey, wait a minute. Tell me, are you dead? What's it like on the other side? You know, I that, feel like I'd great. regret it if there were aliens. Like if I could choose whether or not there were aliens and I said, yes, I would be throwing a Molotov cocktail on society. And there are some people who think that's a great idea. There are some people who are just like, yeah, fuck it. I don't like society. Let's throw a Molotov cocktail on it and, and see what see what the next version's like. Who cares? And But me, I'm like, eh, no, this is cool. This is cool. I like what we got here. Um, I, I don't want to throw a Molotov cocktail on society, but I can't deny that it's interesting. I, I can't deny that I, I do kind of want to know what happens if there's aliens. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. I, I, I wish, I, I think that'd be really cool. If aliens landed, fucking went on YouTube. <laughs> that would like destroy the, biggest, the cost of Bitcoin. They became sure the best, tic, they, came, they, they became the, like the biggest TikTokers, like, like fucking Xenu <laughs> and the, Xenu and the boys. Right. Like, like, it turns out that like when they talk, it sounds a little like a kazoo and people just go wild for it. Yeah. Yeah, that like that would be pretty idea. fucking cool. That's that's how you would like make yourselves known. Instead of like trying to like go to the White House or the Kremlin or something, you just make a TikTok. You just make a TikTok <laughs> introducing yourself to the to humanity. TikTok's controlled by the Chinese. I don't I don't uh, believe it. You got to put it on Twitter for me to buy it. It'd be a, yeah, you could, you could do it on Twitter too. Little, <laughs> It'd go you, everywhere. You could, yeah, they'd have the most followers right away. <sighs> yeah. Well, I think you put it on Reddit. Uh, extra mile put it there it's gonna get a lot of observations i would catch it yeah <laughs> no, i don't know i, have I, never, I, have I think it's probably seen... government technology that's uh that's you know a generation or two ahead of what we're aware of that that's looking ridiculous and uh i think that's probably what we're seeing 
because I just, I don't know. I don't think that aliens are able to come here. And if they, if they were, I don't think they'd just be flying around. Nah, I don't know. They're obeying the prime directive. Well, if they're from <laughs> like the Star Trek universe, then they are, I guess. Mm -hmm. Although they are revealing themselves to you us. You think we just made problem. that stuff up, Kyle? I'm pretty sure Gene Roddenberry <laughs> just made that shit up. We well, it's about... not out of the realm of possibility that, you know, at, at some deep section of the ocean, like deep underground, that there's a fucking monster down there. Who knows? Like something prehistoric. And, and even deeper down, like the stuff that interests me that really blows my mind, like when, when they start talking about um, the Jupiter's moons and stuff, Titan, that, that might hold life underneath like an icy uh, uh, layer that's up top is like, that I, I was reading that they discovered that there's this huge under underground ocean under our the Earth's crust that's like as big as the it was like as big or bigger than all of the oceans that we currently have but underground and I was thinking like what if there's some shit living underground in a giant like deep dark ocean under under the Earth's crust like that stuff just that kind of blows your mind that's yeah about. maybe they couldn't survive in the temperatures as hot as the surface or wait yeah. it's cold wait it, it would be, be uh, or very hot. cold. It could be no, one or the other. Yeah, it, it, it's got because if it's close to the core, it starts to flip the other way, right? Yeah, if, there, if I, there's if far enough down to be close to the core of the Earth, but even at some no. areas in the bottom of the sea, there's like those vents where you can watch it, and there's just boiling water going straight. Yeah, it's I've seen that. hot uh, magma that immediately like boils the water around it, and then there's like hot jets of boiling water going gas. out, and those gases so close, that are coming up. So yeah, yeah, they're living on the hell, man. We talked just, about yeah. space exploration. So I'm for space exploration. I like it. But I, I often have this thought like nothing cool is going to happen during my lifetime. I know we have to like waste the next hundred years before anything cool happens. But I feel like getting to Mars is going to be somewhere on the coolness scale of the moon. Like we'll get up there. There'll be no life. Instead of being gray, it'll be red. And yeah, like, it's it's boring as fuck. You know, like, I feel like we're in the just, stage where we're like an 81 year old guy when the Model T came out mm -hmm. and like you see all the potential and all the super awesome shit that's coming. But you kind of got to temper your expectations and be like, well, I could die any day now. So I'm maybe probably we'll get some gears next year. This. Gears mm -hmm. would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, until we start I traveling think wrong about the Mars thing, though, I, th I think we can be more ambitious than that. Here's what I think is going to happen in the next 25 years. I think we're definitely going to go to Mars. Um, I, I hope it's the United States because I hate seeing these joint ventures between China and Russia and India. All those motherfuckers. We don't need them up there. Leeches. Any flags. No, they need to stay away from our space, uh, space rocks but unless they want a space war. Because if there's anybody that can fire a space war, it's the Americans. We're prepared for that <laughs> shit. Star Trek, Star Wars. I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, I don't we'll make see that no happen. Chinese star movies. No, that ain't happening. <laughs> no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll win the space wars if they come. But I think we're definitely going back to the moon. And by we, I mean humans. Uh, moon and Mars. I think we'll colonize Mars to some extent. Like, there'll be a guy up or three up there living in a biosphere, like, kind of like uh, a Watt. Like the Martian, you know, something like that will happen for, you know, or so. I really want them to go to those the moons of Jupiter to go to Titan where they have hypothesized that there could be life under there, that there's all the, the makings for life there. It would be I've warm heard, enough. It would Neil be liquid Tyson water. Neil Tyson is, is in favor of that. I don't know if you got it. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, Thank him you. and lots yeah. of others. They, they talk about it a lot. And, there, and then there's a movie um, I've talked about it before. It's it's probably a B minus movie, maybe a C plus movie. Uh, it used to be on Netflix. It's called like Mission to Titan or something like that. And uh, it's basically a space movie where they do just that. They land on the moon. They start drilling. Uh, they send a submersible underneath and they and they find some stuff. And it's uh, it's good. I, I'm just convinced that during my life, all we're going to do is land on other dead planets and see rocks that could have existed in Arizona. And well, probably like, more it, or less. It's hard yeah, to get that much... excited. I, I'm excited about that. I think the idea of going to Mars is a big one for me. I wish that we, I wish that like we had a politician that gave a shit about that. Like, like I, you haven't heard Trump or Hillary even say a word about this, the this uh, about space. I would love one of them say like, like you know, give me a Kennedy spot style speech. And this decade, we will go to Mars, not because it is easy, but because it is hard. Like, like come on, let's go, let's go to Mars, let's do something cool. Let's plant an American flag on fucking Mars. That'd be very cool. Inspiration. I get, 
I get I feel like they need another country to compete with in order to do it. They'd have like China or, or Russia or somebody would have to be like they need their leader to say that for anybody here to give a shit. Like you know, if Hillary Clinton started talking about space, Donald Trump would would rip her for thinking that's important. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, and vice versa. So. Space. What about jobs? You know, she, yeah. <laughs> Space jobs. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something Trump would start talking about. This yeah, yeah. He's, he, he's like, he's like, I got a job for every Mexican, and it's in space. <laughs> like, we could all get behind that. The Mexicans, and, uh, the yeah. Mexicans are in space, and then the Mexicans are going to pay me for the fare for me to send them to space. Ah, he's a baby in space. So rock. yeah, that, that is exactly that's, that's so on point though of if either one of them said right now like you know we need to go into space the other one would be, be like that's not important you right. idiot we really do need to wait until another country acts like it's a big deal and play off of that competition yeah what if isis was the what if isis could build a rocket <laughs> ship and start going to space we like should let them should have, have a beheading those big ass martian creatures with the big <laughs> <laughs> Can you, can you see the Martian sitting there, like tied up in the sand with his, his hands behind his back, a real like confused look on his face? Like, how did I get here? What the fuck? <laughs> Allah jumps like, <laughs> what have I the done? The first thing we feel intelligent life in outer space is it being summarily beheaded by ISIS. <laughs> oh because it was a sorcerer. Uh, well, because it was a sorcerer. <laughs> <laughs> it was a witch. <laughs> you could not live in another place unless you are a witch. Like, <laughs> you know what be all, what's awesome about that is ISIS. Their space program could be called ISIS. Just add in space to the end of it. ISIS. <laughs> Islamic State in Syria and space. In space. <laughs> That's cool. I, I want to. I mean, like a rifle. A rifle. Like a laser uh, rifle. Will that ever be a possibility or no? I don't, I don't know. Don't like the idea of reloading or what? That just would be cool. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that lasers have a... How embarrassing it's going to be if aliens get here and we're still using bullets. Like, they'll at least give us props if we've got lasers down, is my imagine. <laughs> I don't know. What, I feel like you can just defeat a laser by wearing some mirrors, though, right? Like, like just... Not not space lasers. Not you think space didn't, lasers. You didn't, you You're right. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> you think they didn't think that through? <laughs> the humans have a new defense. <laughs> it's just a fucking mirror you're holding up. <laughs> like they're like retard signs. Aliens are like, we're going to take over this planet. What's it made of? Something that kills us. Ah, let's go. That was the dumbest part of signs. That ruined, that the was. Whole, ruined a lot of the movie where it was like, oh, they're the most no, hyper people of all time. I love that movie. That it's, was it's, I love that movie. Good. That was the dumbest part of I almost showed my fucking credit card again. I gotta stop playing with it. That was the dumbest part of um War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise was when the aliens neglected to remember that there might be some microbes on that planet that'll kill us. Mm -hmm. Like like they have no immunity. They got the flu. Six of one half dozen of another. Yeah. I'll throw water. I think, that's COVID. As, yeah, it's not even as dumb as the water thing. Th yeah. There's a lot of dumb ones. I think it's like every single alien world. movie where it's like the entire alien invasion is networked to this one ship and that ship is vulnerable to anyone who wants to attack it. And you're just like, what? Why? <laughs> Why? Why would they build that system that way? Why would they attack with one center thing that's doing all of the work and everything else is slated? So Will Smith can win. Yeah. That's it's why. Like, oh, yeah, thank exactly. God they're running on Vista. And then you did not shoot that green oh. shit at me. Did was that's a bad thing. Independence oh, too. Any good? I don't think I saw it. You can avoid that. It. Was the first one? Any good? The, the first one wasn't that great either. <laughs> the first yeah. one was outstanding. I'm inspired. I, I still get tears over the speech. You know, if it wasn't for my son David. <laughs> when <laughs> when the, the president the 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 scientists will no longer be known amazing. as an American holiday. <laughs> that, that whole fucking speech that Bill Pullman it has. It was great. It was Dude, great. Bill Pullman is not good in that movie. He tries his damnedest. <laughs> <laughs> He stands Bill Pullman. <laughs> no, it's more just the dialogue's bad, the acting's bad, the plot's bad. Uh, writing's bad. Writing's bad. Yeah. The, there were a couple cool alien things. Look, I no, loved it. No, never mind. I'm thinking of Men in Black now. No, it doesn't have anything good. I yeah. loved it when I was nine. Yeah, oh, exactly. When that's, about, that's the demographic, though. It was, it was like, oh, man, the Fresh Prince is just wrecking these aliens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look you at him what? go. 
that is what made me like it. I think initially. he's the coolest. Right. He's got the stripper wife and everything. This is finally exactly what, <laughs> this is exactly what nine year old me wants in a life. Finally, we can see I fly jets and I've got my, my girlfriend's a stripper. That turned yeah. out by NASA, kind of a bummer. Yeah, but then he got the flight of space anyway. He did show them that he was good at it. Yeah. yeah. We just have to hope when we get invaded, if we get invaded by aliens, they're as incompetent as the movies say. Because my guess would be that they're going to be so supremely confident, we'll, we'll all be dead before we know they showed up. What if, if we're, that's what they want. What if they get here and they can't believe how hardcore we are? What if that's why they haven't invaded? What, what if they keep portion? looking? How hardcore, like delusional? Like, what no, how, how incredibly aggressive and military and militaristic we are. Like, what if oh, that okay. is is a very odd thing with with, oh, with uh, alien culture? They're just not what used if, to violence. They just come what here. If, they, what if the reason they've advanced so far hmm. is partially the fact that they're a, a very peaceable, uh, cooperative, you know, cooperative group of uh, individuals, and they they look at us and they're like, they've all got weapons that shoot. That shoot projectiles 3,000 feet per second. It's insane. They've got this one bullet. You're not going to believe this. I was just watching this podcast. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was petals of death and then little BBs of death. How many? I, I, I don't and get the, it. This opening scene, like alien, like conference room, and he's just giving a presentation on the bump stock. Yeah. He's like, yes, they're civilians carry these. You know, like, they're like trying to understand why we're so violent, why we can't get stuff straight. We're like talking about our world and they're like, and what are these things you call women? We are all ourselves. And this is just a bunch of gay advanced. They're asexual. They're yeah. just asexual. They don't know about sexual conquest and stuff. So they just focus all on science and lasers and we're fucking. Maybe yeah, but- our only hope is that we look way cooler than them. So at least we'll go out looking tight. Right? Like if they show up, that's and, our only hope. Well, <laughs> that we that we go out looking tight. <laughs> I'm going to buy a fucking anti-aircraft gun. Taylor I like that. Points. Think of it sounded like another Will Smith movie. <laughs> I'll consider this. They all come, but these are all like six inch tall aliens. They're not used to how aggressive we are. And so the way you go out, Kyle, is like the cave troll of Moria. You've just got a two by four in your yard, <laughs> and because you're so tired, you're even making cave troll noises. You're just uh, just going like that, mowing down row after row. And then guess where you live on in all eternity? There's a really cool, like, tapestry of you looking dope and intimidating, swooping them up. And then, of course, like, the next panel of the tapestry is you being killed by the general or something. But they're going to, like, remember, like, man, that was pretty fucking t- crazy, those humans. They were so big. Which and, movie and is this scary. from? Because I mean, it sounds Peter, Hobbit to it's me. probably irreversible. I'm making all of this up. Oh, I, I, I think well, this the is in the Hobbit, right? The Fellowship of the Ring has a little bit of it, you know, when... when... What the, who's the big baddie that they all team up on at the end of The Hobbit? What is wrong? The Hobbit? Yeah. Oh, you're talking about the dragon, Smog. Nope. Right? No. Nope. He's... Big oh, he's that, the, you're talking the... about that, that pale guy? Yeah. It's all CGI? Yeah. Pale I don't know it. So is Taylor. Yeah, he just doesn't know it. That's the scene that he's describing. Oh, well, Probably. well, my way is better because <laughs> nothing could be worse than that movie. <laughs> the movie was terrible. They should be embarrassed. They should be we, fine. When they release s- bad movies, studios should be fined. <laughs> That'd be amazing if it was like under fifty percent approval. Yeah, <laughs> they had to pay out. Every movie goer got like a, you know, got the refund and three bucks more or something. Going <laughs> That'd be it. great. Like everybody who went to the Matrix Revolution or Revelation, they should all get their money back plus something for their time. God, that was so upsetting. Yeah. You yeah, go to Frozen bad. and it's like, you know, I'm sorry she married that guy the first week she met him. Here's your money yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> this all would have been prevented if it wasn't for that. I mean, I liked Frozen. I liked Never it too. Never seen that. I'm just trying to make jokes. Trying to fit in, Kyle. <laughs> it's a bad plot point. <laughs> Always bringing the the podcast down, Woody. Jeez. God damn it, Woody! <laughs> right, God, serious conversation. <laughs> serious you. conversation. You again. <laughs> Look, we were, we're having we were discussing we're, we're having a debate guns here. Their fucking alien you just invasion. have to come Where in and you? shit on Frozen out of nowhere. There was know, bad right? movies and refunds, and she married the guy in a week. It's a beautiful film. What's the best possible Do scenario for us? The snowman? For an alien invasion? Yeah, no, no. If we become the aliens who can invade another another planet, uh-huh. what are we? What's the ideal, you know, intelligent race for us to come across? You know, we don't want one that's too smart, and you can't say like, oh, you show up on the planet and it's all deer and turtles. No, no, no. There's got to be like something running the show the way we mm. do here. I the guess gold, the, best, yeah. the gold collectors of Zukon B. I have yeah. my own idea. 
they could be aquatic and then we could live almost coexisting with them. That's interesting. <laughs> we would end yes. up winning. We've that. done amazing jobs with the waters of our home, our home planet, right? I, it just I just seems... imagine coexisting. The first time you're just like venting your like fucking like nuclear like waste into the water, you know, like cooling your reactors with that. They're like, um, just what are they gonna do? They're aquatic. Are they gonna fucking they're blowhole us. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna squirt me. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> You just, 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 just walk yeah. to like the edge of the there. ocean. You just walk right. to the edge of the ocean. Right. I can just summarize just... what I'm learning here. Your <laughs> ideal race is a race of cowardly, like <laughs> kind of keep to themselves. They have a lot of stuff, but they don't really like defend it very well. <laughs> you know, you know what you're saying is the easily bullied would be just, yeah. the ideal. Just, like, oh, I don't know. They had a good reason to come here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We just fuck them up. They're eating all our fish. Well, they must be hungry. You know, <laughs> just sort of stupid nonsense. And that's what we need to hope for: a bunch of retards living with fins. They can't have fingers. Like, they can get tricky. They can pull triggers with fingers. Definitely or want they, to be finned. Yeah, they want to be finned. <laughs> they should be little, very dumb, and they should have one kind of like special skill that's useful for us: telepathy. That's where I was Maybe. going, or em- empaths. Yeah, it's just oh, shitty no, telepathy. Woody, are you kidding me? What? You know how bad that Maybe they're be? great cocksuckers. You know how bad Ooh, would... I like yeah. the way you're thinking. Yeah, that might feel they're right. Always wet. <laughs> don't want them to read our minds. There's no way that ends well for us as a species if we like approach another species and we're like, you know, we're invading your planet, and then they can read our minds and help. Oh, I just know. checked his we're mind again. Us all. He's still thinking about killing us. <laughs> <laughs> his, his thoughts every three seconds are sex, porn, death. Right, like, and it's just like a loop. Well, that yeah. would incentivize the human race to get rid of them. It's like, do you want these little fish people knowing right, what you beat exactly. off to? No, get them out of there. Yeah, then we scoop them up, and then they'd probably be like some really essential part of the ecosystem, and we're already on the way to turning it into Earth too. Yeah, we'll get a third and fourth. That's what I say. I, it w- That's right. <laughs> I got no problem with that. I got no problem with our this. first conquest of another planet. It's oh, just the great. start. We're learning how to do it. It's learning how to really people. exploit those resources. Yeah. We need some aliens to fucking kill. I'm telling you, I've said it before. I'll say it again. If we had some green men to fucking stomp out, it would unite this whole planet. You wouldn't be worried about whether someone was black, brown, yellow, red, or white, because there'd be a green motherfucker that's not even from here. And there's no fucking. Uh, group to defend them. There's no, they, they got no acronym uh, society to to protect their asses. You can go full species on those green pieces of shit, those reptilian fuckers that are coming down from planet 8174B. Yeah. And, and, and it doesn't matter. You can make like crazy cartoons of them and put them on posters. You can be like, you can take those naughty. insect people and make them look unattractive. You can do yeah. whatever you want to them. You can torture them. You can fucking burn them alive in the streets. Well, they're going to want a war with us if this happens. But my my question is, what if they show up and they look a ton like uh, like Chinese people? Like just happenstance of the universe. They show up Shit. and they even t- like, oh, we don't know you already arrived. Why you not send message? <laughs> like, oh, no, we've been here whole time. Like, there ain't no way. Where, you're not from Cyclone Tree? <laughs> you're from Cyclone Tree? We've been from Cyclone Tree. We've never been here. We know you different. Oh, we call this China. It's like, oh, we stay in China. You you rule this whole place? No, not even close. They, a lot of white folk, black folk, Mexican folk. We don't care for them anymore. Like, like, that's what it would be. And then we'd all have to gang up against the newfound Chinese alien alliance. And that is what I'm pitching next week to Pixar. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'll pick it right up. I, I like it. This is, I'm more interested in this than I am in Infin- <laughs> Infinity War 2. <laughs> War of the and World. It's, and, and it, it's not that they have similar ways of speaking. It's identical. It's Identi- very confusing, <laughs> the whole movie. <laughs> Fly, aliens. <laughs> they're flying their spaceship with a goddamn abacus. They're, they're, they're absolutely just Chinese aliens. All right, I like that. I like that. <laughs> you guys invent gunpowder for us too on your world? Yeah, yeah, we do that too. <laughs> <laughs> you stay. Like, <laughs> uh, that'd be a problem. We'd have to wipe all the. We'd have to wipe them all out. I mean, it, the aliens would give them high tech technology, and we'd all have to band together to fight off. 
the aliens and the Chinese who would have already had the infrastructure and everything ready for like assault and whatnot. This, you know, I don't, I don't have very high hopes for the rest of the world versus China and aliens, depending on how even, powerful. I like are. to think that like they played this game of civilization by focusing all their efforts on one line on the tech tree. Like, like they, yeah. they've got interstellar travel, but they suck at pottery and, and gunpowder. <laughs> oh, Why just... waste coin in social skill? No reason. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Spit on the ground and walk away from me. So we actually have a shot at them. All they could do is arrive here. <laughs> yeah, there's a, um, oh, what's that? There's a, there's a, I think it's a mini series called Alien Nation. And the premise is this giant spacecraft shows up, um, I think uh, over Los Angeles. I mean, it's enormous. And it turns out that it's a slave ship and all of the aliens on it are slaves. I think they had overthrown their like masters who are like the real overlord type aliens. And we have to integrate all of these slave aliens into our society. And it's a, it's, it's sort of, um, uh, uh, it, it's sort of meant to sort of mirror the racism that we're actually seeing in our society with this influx of new people and their, their, their different weird ways and, and how that would work. So, you know, it, it, one of them becomes a cop and, and it follows several of these aliens and they're pretty alien looking, you know, they're bipedal, like two arms, two legs, but they got like this big melon of a head with spots on it. And like their erogenous zone isn't on the front, it's on the back. So like a back massage to them is like finger banging them or something like that. Nice. But they don't mind the front. So like, that's like a back massage to them. And it's so funny to see the dynamic between like the, the, the human and the female alien. He, he's like, you want a back rub? She's like, no, we aren't there yet. And he's like, what about your front? She's like, hmm, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty fun. What was that, the show I, called? Uh, alien Nation, I think. Hmm. Alien Nation, I want to say. I haven't seen it in a long time. It's, it's, probably, it's probably pretty fucking dated by now. It looks like shit. But when I saw it, it looked fine. I wish I hope we get to see aliens in my lifetime. I hope I, that would be incredible to 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 meet up with some intelligent alien life. That could be either incredible or really really terrible. Either way, I'm up on... for some, I'm up for a change. No, but like, dude, any like if we if they're advanced enough to fly here on like interstellar space travel and all that, mm -hmm. like that's the same as us finding a new planet and being like, look at this. There's just it's just nothing but a bunch of cats, I guess. Well, I guess we're gonna take it over. Why? What, what should we do with the cats? I don't care. Kill them and make them into scarves. Whatever. Like that, we'd look at it the same way. You know, like they're gonna show up, and be like, "Here, like they're, they're pyramid. They're really proud of that." <laughs> Jesus Christ! Like, <laughs> and then they they massacre us. I, you would hope not. I, I, I've heard a lot of really smart people talk about, you know, what would happen and and, uh -huh. and what the idea. You know, I've heard Stephen Hawking talk about. I appreciate it and, the compliment. And Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And, and then I've heard some fools talk about it. <laughs> um, hey, sort of embarrassed themselves. Um, but uh, but but no, it, it. I don't care. I don't care if they want a war or if they want to like give us technology. I just want it to happen. I, I'd be down either way, right? And and I like to imagine I, that that you know it, like the little Dicky song, like like would they just they just wipe us out? Would we like or would they be like, damn? Earth go hard. <laughs> like maybe they've been living like a peaceful pussy existence for their entire evolution. And the, and the whole warfare thing doesn't even occur to them. And they come down here and maybe they don't even have a weapon. They have no weapons whatsoever. They don't even have sticks. And we just beat the shit out of them and take all their technology. That'd be great. I mean, that would be ideal, but they'd also <laughs> probably like have the capacity to build weapons. Oh, they wouldn't figure it out by the time we're way at, we just, Fucking GTA, motherfucker, and take their spaceships away from them. Well, they're they're gonna send more. They're gonna go. Bring hey, it. Uh, Bring it. They, they, they'll have two. Didn't make by it the back. time they they get here, maybe. Uh, I don't know. We are I, like like. There's no way to know, you know. But we are a race of people, a species of people that are about warfare. It is in our blood, 100. percent None of us, me, you, or Woody, we wouldn't be here if our ancestors hadn't went to, to fought infinite a number of wars throughout time whether you're talking about world war one or world war two or or the the the, the war of the of the cave clans in, in the year pro magnums right yeah like like there was there, there was definitely yeah, a point yeah. there was definitely a point <laughs> where like there was a cave over there and our people were in this cave and there was only one fucking source of water and we killed them all with clubs and rocks and now that's our water so we, they, we got to pass our genes on 
And that's why you and I and Woody exist, because our ancestors were the biggest, baddest, smartest motherfuckers that existed in the valley. So they were able to wipe out all of the Cro-Magnons or the, the, the Hobbit people or, or any other group of humans or monkeys or apes or wolves or saber-toothed tigers or whatever they had to fight off and, and kill to get here. We, we're about as millions we're of the years coolest. have led to us yeah we are we the are coolest a... species on earth and it's not even close like if they were a cool like close. if an alien showed up and they were doing like a stack ranking a power ranking the ap top 25 of species on this new planet <laughs> we're taking we're at we're the alabama we're roll roll tide we're alabama of of the you know college football world in terms of animals we're number one it Fucking doesn't even get AP, close coaches oh, it, poll everything it's, it, it, and it looks like the the AP Jerry. poll, where it's like 62 votes for one Alabama. Oh, well, one alien shows sharks, and that's it. Okay, <laughs> well, that's, that's it. Like, what would come second? Like, oh, an octopus. That's a neat. Dolphin, it changes color. Maybe? Yeah, a dolphin, maybe. It, it depends what they value. Like, what if they just think that flying is neat? Like, well, like, the, are, the ants know? outnumber them 50 to 1. Yeah, <laughs> like a million to 1. Yeah, I, I mean, if you value athleticism, some of those sea creatures are pretty awesome. We can fly. We can, we can go to space. We can we can launch things five six times the speed of sound. We can blow up an entire continent. We are it. We're we it. Can, we can make flat screen TVs. And like that's what would parts. happen, by the way, if they if they show it with some pussy shit. If they come down here and they're a bunch of like fucking pussy ass amphibious creatures, and they're like walking around with big globes of water on their head. <laughs> We're going to wipe them the fuck out. They're, they, they see a sword, and they're like, what's that? They see a gun, and they have no concept. Well, we use it to fire projectiles at our enemies at, at three times the speed of sound, and it just destroys them. And they're like, what's an enemy? We don't, that doesn't work in the Universal Translator. We, what is enemy? And, and they're like, oh, <laughs> we're going to show you. You are my enemy. That if they travel to here, we are so uninteresting to them. Like, if we went to Mars, and there were only ants there, like when humans traveled from place to place, they didn't stop and try and communicate with ants on the edge of Portugal. They just said, ah, there's nothing here. This place bullshit. You know, like yeah. th that's what they would do to us. They'd be like, oh, they, they, they communicate by meat flapping and saliva in their mouths. This is yeah. disgusting. <laughs> you know, like it, they don't even have radio clickers in their brains or telepathy or however it is that they communicate. And, and they would just find us completely uninteresting and wipe us out the way that we do routinely. What if they're I, here? I heard this what? proposed recently, right? Now. Ooh, what if they're here already? I like this. So if there was like a superhighway or a city and like emerging next to an anthill, that anthill would barely even understand that cool shit is happening around them. They don't get it. Their world is so small. They don't they don't see what what's happening there could be some fourth dimension there could be something that these big guys exist in and we are just dumb ants who don't understand the wavelength that they operate on that could be but they're probably not able to see Steve us either i definitely it. believe in like trans-dimensional beings ah, i think that, what's that i mean? think it, I, I think that there are many infinite universes stacked right on top of and within one another and every possibility that that there is exists in those an infinite there's an infinite number of them and that if we could pierce that veil we could go to one of them you ever see the tv show sliders i've seen it's, rick and morty it sounds it's rick and morty <laughs> i've so seen I, sliders I, too yeah sliders was garbage it was pretty bad it was it was i liked it at the time i was a kid though you know basically in sliders this uh this guy has this little remote control and he goes Bloop! And a portal opens up, and he's able to go to another dimension that's always very much like the Earth he, he lived on in most ways. But everything's a little different. He goes to one, and there's like Nazis have, have won World War II, and he goes to another, and it's like everything's the same except his girlfriend's black or whatever. Like it's always just a little tweak here and there. He, they never go to the universe where like the Earth just isn't there and all fucking die, of course. You know, they, they go to one, and you, they never know how long they're going to be there. There's like a timer on the thing, and they're like, ah. We're here on Wild West Earth for the next seven days. Better integrate into society, <laughs> I guess. And it's like, no, fucking hide out. Don't well, you why don't you carry a backpack like, full of water? 
Yeah, they usually need to like get some supplies, get some food, and you know they don't have money because they'll break their fucking gadget and they gotta like find Constant. some medieval yeah fucking oh my it. god you'd think they'd treat that gadget more carefully right you know put it in a carrying case like you put use your iPhone lanyard right? have you never seen a lanyard <laughs> have you never played Wii right? before you can't just be swinging the right? fucking portal gun this around is an everywhere iPhone that your life depends on and you don't get a case for it the fuck it was absurd it was yeah. absurd so they would have to go in society and look for like a capacitor or something but no and that never happened in advanced earth it always happened in like wild wild west earth yeah taylor i want to say and i could be wrong about this the guy who plays gimli main character on this show really i think you're right yeah guy who plays oh. gimli's a main character he's a big fella in real life beard mm -hmm. Very deep yeah. voice, kind of operatic uh, in appearance, and uh, and then there was a black guy. Um, there was, and then there was the main white guy who invented the gadget. Yeah, good-looking guy who seems like the guy from Ozark, but isn't. Uh, he seems to me like the guy that played Superman in the Adventures of the New Adventures of Lewis and Clark on TV. The Dean dude. Yeah, Dean. Something or not. Is that him? Know. He seems chunkier than that guy. Oh, yeah, I don't look this up. Sliders is like old school Fox show that that was like mediocre at best. But I think it went on for like five seasons. Sliders. I've never even heard of it. So I mean, it took me to like a bunch of little hamburgers. <laughs> 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 That's it, it. Ran from 1995. Jerry O'Connell. Jerry O'Connell. That's the guy. Yeah. I would it's not Five have seasons that. of this shit. Um, it's a little bit like Quantum Leap in some ways. I guess it's even listed here. Uh, and I, and there was a girl too. Yeah, John Reese Davies played Professor Maximilian Arturo. And I'm I'm over here looking for scare, for creepy subreddits, and I saw something I didn't want to see. <laughs> What'd you see? I'm afraid of. Uh, so I only have one fear. Do you, Do you remember what my fear is? Like, Lassophobia. The only thing that. I, well, everybody's afraid of the the unknown deep of the of the ocean, right? It's it's really the fear of the unknown, I suppose, to some extent. But as far as like classical monsters, if you will, it. Frankenstein bullshit, right? You know, uh, werewolves bullshit. Bring it. I, I'm not afraid of any of these things. Aliens. A aliens. I'm afraid of aliens. Uh huh. Because because you can't fight an alien, you can't shoot an alien, you can't argue with an alien. He sees you as a lower life form. He's got higher technology, higher intelligence. So, so he like, sees you as a farm animal. So He's not like the not like the specific movie aliens. Not like that type of. Oh no, not not no, those are called xenomorphs. General. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I'm not afraid of xenomorphs because they are <laughs> fictional and uh, and and they live on uh, uh, another planet far from here. So, okay. so not no need to fear them. I'm afraid of the uh, the 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 you know, the large eyed gray aliens specifically. Uh, if you ever watch um, the fifth kind um, uh, or the um, fifth element? No, the fifth kind. Okay. Let me let me it's new to let me. me. Let me try to find a thing of it's about <laughs> alien abduction. Fire in the sky. Um, uh, these are some of the scariest movies I've ever seen, um, and they 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 really really terrify me. Let's 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 watch this trailer for I a minute. Can't. And no, I it my computer has been for whatever reason it's not running well tonight. I thought things were great. We really got to get the new one cooking. But if I watch a video, I'm positive the audio it's going to be jumpy and uh, crackly. That was the wrong trailer anyway. That was something else that that, that was also scary. I don't, I don't know what the really? fuck that it is. It says the fifth kind trailer. I can see why you yeah, thought it yeah. was right. I was I, I, because I I was wrong. It's the fourth kind. Oh. That's the movie <laughs> oh. with Mila Jovovich. Fine. Yeah, the fifth kind looks scary too, but but fuck that. It's probably not nearly as scary as the fourth kind. Okay, like like like. I watched this movie, and I I couldn't sleep. I was afraid. I, I, I watched this shit when I was like twenty seven. Mm -hmm. Like this, <laughs> this isn't this is like like yeah, I was a little kid, and I watched I watched Fire in the Sky when I was like twelve years old. Fucked me up. Fucked me up. Both in both of these cases, both of these movies are about alien abduction, and they are loosely based on I'm using air quotes true stories. Stories that it, that have well documented like police records and wit eyewitness testimony and stuff like that. Like basically something went on, and there are people who say that aliens were involved. I, I'm not I'm not saying that they're true stories, uh, but but they are based. There there's some sort of structure there that seems true enough that it adds a realistic sort of 
tone to what you're watching, and that makes it even more horrifying. Yeah, I'm afraid of aliens. And and what I saw was when I was looking for weird subreddits was this gif of a, a gray alien with those big fucking eyes coming out of somebody's claws, and that horrifies me. That scares me so goddamn bad. Did you watch that video Chiz linked um, <clears throat> about finding aliens and why that would be so terrible for us? I've watched a lot of those. Um, I, I really find that stuff interesting. There's a lot of cool YouTube channels um, that talk. I, what's it called? There's some sort of filter about. Um, this. I, I watch a lot of about alien life and the possibility of it, and why or why we may have not contacted or come into contact with it yet. It's it's really interesting to me. Yeah, he had a. a I had never seen anyone describe what he described. He was like we have telescopes and we have satellites and we can see really far and we look out into the vast, vast, vast universe and we found nothing, nothing, no hints of any life whatsoever as far as we can look. So he's like, why is that? You know, is it that he says there has to be some sort of filter. It could be that the filter is one we already passed where it's really hard to create life from no life period. Mm. Right. That, that could be it. It could be that the filter was some, Somewhere along the way, where it's really hard to go from a single cell to a multi-cell organism, right? It could be that the, the filter is in front of us, something we haven't hit yet, right? Because the universe is very old, right? And practically endlessly old, you know, from, from our perspective. It would be weird that we're the most advanced to have ever advanced. If there's a filter in front of us, like, hey, once people figure out how to go from planet to planet quickly something obliterates ob obliterates their world. And uh, he's like, if the filter is in front of us, that means that there's probably something that people are repeatedly learning that gets themselves killed. It could be yeah. AI, it could be nanotechnology or something that just ends Thermonuclear there. weapons. Sure. And uh, I don't know, he, he's like, so if we meet someone who's on the other side of that filter, it is really bad news. I wish I could lay it out quite like he did. But it was yeah. interesting. It's like, yeah. We can see pretty far at this point, right? I, we're pretty confident that there's no life nearby. And by nearby, that I don't know what that even means. 10 light years, you know? They, like, well, right, we, haven't, we, haven't seen, we haven't got any radio signals, but we don't know that they would use radio signals. And like, we, we have no, you know, we, we, we can't see them, but, but we would be able to see them. But I, was, I was watching a video about these things called um, von Neumann probes. And the idea is that you have this self-replicating space von von Neumann, uh, V O N N E U M A N N something like that, uh, and it's these self-replicating space probes that they 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 say that you know if it, it, it would be how an advanced uh, civilization would yeah you build a robot it shoots it off lands somewhere the robot's whole command is basically build another copy do two copies of yourself shoot off to two more and that any any space steering civilization of a further enough technological you'd see rel relevance rel revenants of them from this remnants yes. yeah. and, and and the thing is we haven't found <laughs> one yet one hasn't contacted us yet so there were there's all these theories about why haven't we so either there are none because there's never been intelligent life intelligent enough to create one even though it's sort of a it's it's go, it would happen if there were intelligent life it's 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 sort of a an obvious step to it seems to like we're 300 explore. years from that you know I, the video suggested we're very close to it okay. I, I i don't know um or maybe there's one in our solar system right now sitting asleep waiting you know to maybe every 10 million years it scans us right 10 million years ago, there, there wasn't anything to, to know about. One million years ago, there wasn't anything to report back, right? So there's that possibility. Or maybe it's sitting there waiting, watching, until we do get to a certain point in technology. And then it, it messages, maybe it just zaps us with gamma radiation and sets us back. I feel you know, like you can see human life on Earth from really far away. You know, the way yeah, our cities we, light things up. It's not even that. We've been actively broadcasting into everywhere forever we do this with radio waves we do this actively we send out probes that are you know broadcasting this information attempting to look for life and it's you know i'm a big science fiction guy i read a lot of science fiction and that that is a questionable strategy on some on some way of looking at that because you're essentially announcing to yourself and who's going to find you anyone with better technology than you are the people who are actually going to be able to follow up on that the people who can if they can do it if it's ever something that is something they do in this world who can move faster than light who can move who can hear your radio signal backtrack and then follow find you and it's like the that's a pretty stupid 
stupid technique on some level. The little bit I know about Civ compared to you has actually impacted my line of thinking about how to run a country, how to lead a nation, how to run a planet. You know, like it, I feel like you send out scouts. Great. Now that that place knows you're nearby. Yeah. It, it's a risky thing to do. I, uh, you know, and in guns versus butter, you know, where you invest your, you know, your economic resources. Uh, a lot of my thinking around that is influenced by civilizations. <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah. It, what would a, you know, and, and if they did find us and they were interested in us, if they replied back with a message, what would that message be? You know, what would they reply back? We're coming. Submit. <laughs> would, would, would the message say, hello, I, that's greetings. Another, I mean, I love would it say, things. help us, please. You know, like, like what, what would it say? Would it be a warning? Would it be uh, a, a, never, a, a long data stream and a, 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 a binary code that, that needed to be uh, compiled and it's, it's secret technologies? Uh, you know, maybe it's like contact. natural resources. <laughs> yeah, but that's, I don't We're think that would be We're thinking about coming. It. We don't have much water. What you got? But water is so prevalent in the universe, and it's so easy to make, right? Like, like th that's the, that, that's one thing I don't think it would be. You know, in, in Independence Day, the Will Smith movie, they mm -hmm. wanted our planet. They wanted to gobble up our resources. But the, the, the universe is just full of resources. And if they're advanced enough to get here, then they're advanced enough to, to make water from hydrogen and oxygen. You know, they, it, that, so that, I don't think that would be it. So the, I think the only – I think they would either see us as pets or, or, uh, or, or maybe, you know, someone they could teach. Or, may, or what if it's some sort of artificial intelligence that was created long ago by an advanced race that has decided that all sentient biological life is a plague upon the universe and needs to be stamped out? That would be because the scariest thing. That's what we do, right? If we, we went those. to another planet and we were like, oh, yeah, the only thing here is robots. We can do anything. You know, fuck it. They're not even life, right? Or if we said, yeah, we went here, but there's no intelligent lives. There's just a bunch of like koala type things. Uh, we can do anything we want. That's what we do. They'd have to be as smart as us to get our respect and if they found us then you know of course we're probably not the smart ones yeah yeah it's it's, it's, it's a really scary uh, proposition you know everybody wants it to be star trek where everybody's pretty much on the same yeah. level of uh, of evolution you know but I, I don't think that's that that's the least likely uh event and of course star trek explains why everybody's virtually on the same level they, i'm not going to go do stupid they? i don't remember that yeah so they actually no, have an explanation that's good because it's totally absolutely it's, it's so a big hole if they don't they they discover uh genetic parallels between all of the major races in the star trek um oh, okay it's like universe a it, title. exactly yeah. someone yeah. had seeded the 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 universe the galaxy <laughs> actually with uh with their own genetic platform it had evolved into these bipedal life forms that became Vulcans or Cardassians or Klingons or humans. And, and so what they all had a common ancestor basically. And that's why everybody was virtually on the same tech scale, basically looked alike, you know, two eyes, two ears, one mouth, uh, you know, bipedal, all that stuff. It's crazy. I think as much of aliens as I do when I think of the zombie apocalypse, really? always well, a great story makes great for a movie. But the reality is like slim to none. And over the years, it's just been so many individuals that everybody stops long enough to look into outer space, whether it's late at night, whatever the case may be, might be high, might be drunk. It really doesn't matter to think what is actually beyond. And then and, and, and is there more? And the more you begin to think about this, the more you start to believe that there is. And once you share your story with other individuals, they too will begin to believe. If another individual starts to believe on something that may or may not exist, it becomes the world's biggest story. But the reality is we'll all be dead well before anything ever happens. I, I've been working on zombies for, for about eight months now. I have 18 homeless men in a shipping container that I've dosed that I've, that I've dosed with rabies and uh, that I've been abusing and leaving in the hot sun uh, every oh, day. Back they, on your sex life again. They've gone, they've <laughs> gone insane. <laughs> they are just filled with nothing but bloodlust. Uh, I feed them roadkill. They're ready to unleash themselves upon the populace. I hear that. I can respect that, Kyle. I think if you release it in Florida, then you'll get away with it. They won't Nobody would it. notice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they just blend in with the population. Yeah. Now, being the fact they're homeless, have you at least offered these gentlemen 
those quality jeans that you're wearing. <laughs> the pajama jeans, are they all rocking pajama jeans. They turned me on to the pajama jeans. I mean, they, they got some good ideas. I mean, you know, I, you don't live on the streets and not understand comfort. It's 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 gonna happen. I hear you, man. The, the story itself focused on essentially like utilitarianism, right? Like the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. So like we're going to obliterate. I'm gonna, you know, at least in the comic, it was releasing a giant alien slug, you know, thing. But in the in the movie, it's like we're basically going to like annihilate uh, York, like a whole bunch of yeah, like a whole bunch of huge cities, New York and a handful of others, okay. and like you know millions of people are going to die, but like the world will have peace forever. So like countless billions now and into the future will never know war; they only know peace. So like small price to pay. Like it was, it was a lot of things like that that went into the actual story itself. So yeah, weird. I was going to say like. I didn't work with Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That's well, it was a different scenario, plaza. right? Yeah, it led it led to the and Japanese die economic hard. miracle, <laughs> but and die hard. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, it would it, it would have worked what in was the other city, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Nagasaki. It would have worked. In, and what was the, the, the plaza in party. Die Hard? Um, Nakatomi Plaza. Nakatomi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it would have worked if what had happened was that like a a a, a fourth part, a third party had simultaneously nuked. New York, DC, Moscow, and uh, Tokyo, and all of a sudden in the middle of World War II, because uh, that's the scenario that we got in Watchmen. So that like the Soviets and the Americans are like, whoa, I know we got our problems with one another, but somebody just destroyed us both. We got to get together on this one and, and time out all that communism, democracy. Let's just worry about aliens blowing up our key cities for a while and, and band together on this one. It's what I've always said, like in like the real world, like we need green people to hate. And suddenly it wouldn't matter about black, white, yellow, and brown. If there's some green motherfucker that comes messing with us, then we're all, we all have a commonality that we're human beings. But there's some reptilian pieces of shit coming down from Saturn that we need to be focused on. So fuck our politics, our, 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 our gender identities, um, all of that. Did, they are the issue. Did you know that conversation happened in the 80s? Yeah. I, really? Yeah. Between Gorbachev and Reagan. Gorbachev, yeah. Reagan Dude. actually oh, asked right. Gorbachev in real life with seriousness, like, if we were attacked by aliens, would you come to America's defense? And Gorbachev was like, yeah, yeah, we band together in a situation like that. Yeah. <laughs> Save the earth. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, that's the, the problem that you have with that, though, is you, you're basically dealing with like loose affiliations. Because, I mean, you know, maybe it's, it might be a little cynical to say this, but you could imagine like some alien race, like, whether by visiting for benign reasons or by being like belligerent, but whatever the case is, they visit Earth, humanity freaks out, destroys them. So like we band together for a short period of time. Then what it turns into is a great gold rush to like reverse engineer their weapons and technology. And so then you have like countries, you know, going back to the way they were before. But I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, like you would hope something like that, like some external factor would lead to a, a commonality among like nations. Yeah. And, and countries where people would like- it certainly would. Yeah, because what it would do is it would it would make things it would open things up. Like that was the basis behind the 1950s. Um, what was that? They they remade it with Keanu Reeves. Um, oh, the 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 last. Oh, it was the Alien movie. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Um, the Matrix. The day the no, day the world stood still. The day the world stood still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So you, yeah, you take that one and like like original like in in the original version and in the new version. What it did is it established that like Earth was just one planet and like this huge affiliated network of like you know sentient races or sentient beings that exist out there and it like it opened everything up but it's like you're not ready for this kind of technology because you guys are just primitive and violent so we're going to cut you off until we feel like you're ready um but that like it's it, good was it good it does it, uh well the original was good the, the one with counter reads was okay i mean it wasn't terrible but it wasn't great i mean it was it's worth a uh, worth a watch there if you aren't enough good sci-fi movies there really aren't. Like I've been really in a sci-fi kick recently, and I've been trying to find Pandora. stuff. I bet. Ne have, have you both seen? Pandora? I've seen. I've seen Pandora or Pandora. I liked it. Is that oh, what you're saying? Pandora is good. No, whenever someone, someone, have this whenever right, when, whenever someone says what you just movie. said, when they're like, "Ah, oh, there's not enough good sci-fi," I'm like, "Have you seen Pandora with Ben Foster?" And they're Dude, like, "No." Oh my god! Watch it. West ending. What's, Holy shit. Yes. Pandorum is that the one good. where they're. It's a space horror movie. They maybe wake up and find themselves yeah. in deep water. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Pandorum is like the psychosis they dude, dude, that story they told, like it's still haunting when they're like there was this ship that went out and like the the captain freaked out and like jettisoned everybody's pods out in the deep space. 
and they just died in their pods after how yeah. many years. Yeah, yeah. Event like, Horizon, like, of course, is is another oh, one of my favorites. That's just space horror. That that movie scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. <laughs> so what was the you movie? know what I what I tried to watch like just <laughs> the other night is I was watching uh, Project Atlas. Is that it? Project is that the Tom Hanks movie? Something Atlas. Oh, Cloud um, Atlas. Cloud Atlas. Yeah. I was watching Dude, Cloud so Atlas, long. and like. Yeah. It's just a series of like vignettes that are like loosely connected in like different time periods with Tom Hanks, and I got like thirty minutes in, and I was just like, or I got like an amount of time in. I'm like, this this isn't very good so far. I'll give it a little more. And I just I got to a point like this is fucking stupid. I don't care because like when he's playing the old timey uh, version of him, his like talking is like, wife come, no eat bad fish, you you make sick. No, 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 yum, no, yum. It's like, like literally, that shit episode like of that. The Office with Kevin. Yeah, it's literally like that, where he's he's just taking out all the important words and being like, stripe, uh, stripe cat tiger, Urgh, no, like just stupid shit. And I'm like, this is fucking dumb. And so I like hit back on Netflix just to see how far I was into it. That movie is three hours long, and I am not going back to watch it. That movie fucking sucked, and the reviews were wrong. It was boring as shit, and it's not because I didn't get it. I get it. It's just shitty. So, yeah. no. Do you guys see The anything. Passenger? It had uh, Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence. Passengers. No, I've, I've Passengers, thought about it, you. but Dude, so, I, I saw the reviews for it, and I just, it kind of turned me off to it. Passengers, in my opinion, is a good movie, right? You know, it's not great. It's not the kind of thing you talk about a couple of years later, but it was, a, it was a good movie. I enjoyed my time in it. And then it might be Nerdwriter on YouTube, but the, someone on YouTube suggested a rewrite of it, which made it amazing. And, and basically what happens in Passengers is you follow Chris Pratt's character as he wakes up and then he's all alone. He maybe starts going a little crazy because he's so alone. Then he wakes up Jennifer Lawrence's character, falls in love, but he's lying to her about the circumstances that woke her up. And they're going to travel for so long. It's basically murder to wake someone up because... Like you're just going to spend the rest of your time with no human interaction except him. He decided to do that to her, where she would have otherwise woken up with the rest of the thousands of people on the ship and enjoyed the community and, and, and the life that she had intended. If they had started the movie with her being woken up and not knowing like the circumstances and him lying to her and her slowly figuring out what happened, <coughs> it would have been amazing. I wish everyone could I see this. I never watched yeah. the movie, but literally from the trailer, I figured out everything you just said, and so I just refused to watch it. Like, like, like uh, just from the trailer, I knew the good. plot of the movie and that I'm he was sure going to wake her up. Many worse movies than than Passengers. Since <sighs> and I also yeah. don't like that they, they they cast those two like, like like just right at the peak of their stardom. Like, like I don't know, something about that turned me off. I wasn't into it. I hear you. Um, yeah. I think that's part of why I watched it. So like, it worked on me, but. It was maybe a waste of their star power. It was good. Uh, D- District Nine is one of my favorite sci-fi. Oh movies. my god, dude! Yes, that's, that's another one. one. That's another one. It's yes. a bit of an allegory. That's for Peter Mata. Jackson. No, no, no. That's uh, that. that's Neil Blomkamp. Isn't it? Yeah. Well, who, which it. one was Peter Jackson? Oh, whatever. It doesn't fucking matter. I'm not sure. Well, he was. Know. He was supposedly he was like a protege of Peter Jackson, I think, or something like that. Yeah, that's what I, I meant to say. Then that's the one. That's <laughs> the one. He, he may have been. Um, so. Who was it they originally were going to have make the Halo movie? It, it may have been Peter Jackson making the Halo movie. It was movie. originally Peter Jackson, I think. It, that, like, that's the connection that you're, that you're maybe making there because mm-hmm. most of the sci-fi props used in District 9 are Halo movie props that got repurposed for that when the Halo movie mm-hmm. fell apart. Um, I saw I, District 9 and thought that that's it. Like the videography and, and effects and stuff were amazing. And then mm-hmm. later I learned that it was done on a real shoestring budget and the effects were, you know... Not that amazing. And I thought back and I'm like, huh. Yeah, they really tricked me into thinking they were great. <laughs> yeah, I thought, I thought they were. I thought they were like, like, the movie was, it was a great film. Like it's, but yeah, I, and then the they main, were able the to actors. do it kind of cheap. And, and like, but I, I, somehow the fact that they didn't have an Infinity War budget just escaped me. And I thought it was wonderful. Yeah, it was something about the color palettes that they used were particularly generous to CGI. I remember, I remember watching a video explaining that, that they, they, it was a purposeful thing to make things have us have its own little look to it. Um, children oh. of men, it, like, like on the, it, there's a lot of kinds of sci-fi, but like children of men is another sort of dystopian future. What where, is that you know, middle word of men? Children, children of, men. of yeah. men. It's children a, it's a, men. a Clive. Oh, oh my God. Have you never seen children of men? Woody? 
I, you should. It's a it's a really entertaining. Oh, it's so amazing. It's yeah, real good. Really good. It's in the future. Uh, mankind has stopped being able to procreate, and no one knows why. And uh, it's it's very dystopian because there's a guy out there who's literally the youngest person in the world, and he's a super celebrity because of it. You know, he he's he's the last baby this. born. Uh, and and uh, it, it's 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 pretty dark. It, it has it feels a little bit like V for Vendetta in some ways, like like mm-hmm. it's sort of the society that they live in, I guess, and how it's kind of downtrodden. But it's it's not that in any sort of way. V for Vendetta is another one. Is this the one, one, one where a baby is born and they try to like protect it and yeah. take it somewhere? Yeah. yeah. V for Vendetta took me out of it when he did his uh, very vivacious like monologues. I love that. It was like, I don't know, I thought that was a little silly. But overall, it was a good movie. One that I watched recently that I, probably my favorite sci-fi movie, if you can put it as sci-fi all time. is tortured me. head. Is The Thing. And The Thing is so fucking good. Kyle, you pointed something out to me that I never noticed when I watched it. I watched it again a couple months ago with that in mind. And this movie came out in like the fucking 70s, so this isn't a spoiler. Okay, and... I was going to say, please tell me it's the original. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the original one. Okay. And like at the very end, when they're sitting there in kind of the burnt out husk of some vehicle, and he's sitting down, and then the other guy sits down, and he reaches and he takes that bottle that was full of gasoline, and he takes a big refreshing swig, and then it goes to the other guy's face, and like... Then the movie ends. Kurt Russell's like, like, oh, that was so fucking good. Like, like Kurt Russell's like, yeah, you, you enjoying that? You enjoying your beer? Yeah, that beer that's full of gasoline? Okay, I know you're not a fucking human being. All right, <laughs> take care of this in just a minute here. And it's like, and then it ends with that amazing, like, tech, like, like techno music. Like, 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 oh, it's so good. I love that whole movie. Huh, it's fantastic. Yeah. It holds up I love time. practical it effects. Oh, it, it's great. Like, it's it's genuinely scary. The sci-fi is good. It doesn't feel hokey at any when, time. Like, like yeah. there's some hokey when the, stuff. But when it's when the old. guy's torso opens up and oh, the jaws, yeah. and the it takes mouth. the guy's arms and bites him off, and he's just, and he's just like, ah, ah, and everybody's freaked out because the guy no longer has arms, but they also got to focus on the fact that a human body just opened up like a Venus flytrap and ate <laughs> a man's arms, and now wiggly things are sprouting from it and going everywhere. It's, yeah, like it's it's the environment that made that movie so good because you didn't mm-hmm. know who was the thing and who was human. So like you yep. felt like Kurt Russell. Yeah, it was. Did you guys ever see Arrival? Of course. Yeah, I did yeah. see Arrival. Yeah. Oh, yes. the one with the speech, the linguist or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was see that to me, like I, I did not know know what to expect. I didn't even see it in theaters. I didn't see it until like a few months after it came. And I feel like that's a movie that I should have gone to see in theaters. Because like the soundtrack and everything was amazing for that film. I like that, that actress a lot good. too. There's like three uh, redheaded, attractive actresses that I can't tell <laughs> apart from one another uh, from movie to movie. I just have to like Google them every time. But but that's one of the ones I like. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. Feel you I liked Minority Report, but I liked the the spinoff one where it's about a uh, second generation Asian immigrant child trying to not disappoint his parents with his book. Of- <laughs> 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 If I get anything wow. less than an A plus, I'm gonna be in my room all summer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it is. That's the whole movie. That's the whole movie. It's just him <laughs> cramming, <laughs> cramming for his midterm. Uh, Tom Cruise is an incredible actor. Like, like, like that. That's an overlooked movie because of Tom Cruise. Crazy. Like, yeah. like it's it's such it's a crazy premise for a movie. Like, there, there's that part where he thinks that. So Tom Cruise's character is a part of like a, a police agency that em, that that employs these three uh, sort of um, 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 what's the word I'm looking for psychic yeah clairvoyant beings human beings oh, seen it. who can uh, pre predict crimes they see the crime happening before it happens and their thoughts are sort of printed out onto a computer screen and be like holy shit fourth and main. Billy Davidson's is about to kill his secretary because she's been embezzling money and they rush in right before he can do it and arrest him for murder because he was gonna do it. And so Tom Cruise's character, his son, was kidnapped and he never he never saw me. He's like it's like John Walsh, right? Like like when he was when his his like eight year old son when uh, was kidnapped like a decade before and he never found him ever. And so that's part of his character's psyche. And uh, they sort of manipulate him into thinking that. This is the guy who did it, and the guy's admitting to it. And he's like, "Yeah, I, I, w- I was gentle with him. I was gentle with him. He didn't feel anything. I did this and that, and then I put him in a barrel and I sealed the barrel and I floated it out into the water and it sank. He didn't feel anything. And the crazy that comes over Tom Cruise's eyes as he's as he's about to murder this man, 
it's top notch acting. It's it's mm. it's good shit. It's that's a good movie. Good sci fi. Yeah, and I saw it a long time ago. I don't I don't remember the details. Yeah, like from what I remember, yeah, it was it was amazing. Would you rather the aliens that make first contact be robotic or organic? Organic. Yeah. Me too. Why'd you guys choose it? Because the robotic aliens may have no respect for organic life forms. Um, they, they might, they might like, like an organic life form, like while they might be like way more advanced than us, at least we're like both, we, we both share that the, the fact that we're both organic and mortal, mm -hmm. whereas a robotic entity would be literally immortal and Wait. they would, they might see us as like, just, are we, are we insect. saying, that, are we saying, what if it's, so what if it's uh, organic material? Right, like uh, like a carbon based uh, life form. Great, cool. But like, what if it was you know tin based or some shit like that? Oh well, that's that's a little different. Like like if it's and that's still organic. Like like you could have a silicon based life form. You mean like a, like a straight up like a robot? Like a we're like talking a about like fucking, like a Roomba. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Like> a Roomba. <laughs> the Roombas yeah. are alive. They're terrifying. The there. Roombas are taking over, man. I'm yeah. telling you. Like, I don't know. Yeah, if it was an artificial intelligence, like like, or or if it was like formally organic um, aliens who had transferred their like consciousness into like a, a digital format, um, I feel like that they, they have even less uh, in common with us than like some hyper advanced like green guys, you know, like the green like the mm -hmm. people often theorize that like the little green men are going to show up and they're going to be look at us like we're ants or cattle or something like that, and that could absolutely happen, but. There's plenty of humans who don't just, who think cattle should live, right? Who thinks we shouldn't eat cattle? Uh, they, you know, there's plenty of us who like look at, ca at like, maybe they look at us like pets, and that's better than looking at us like organic life form number three zero five seven R exterminate exterminate. Like you don't want to deal with Didex. The way that we look at rocks, Who. robots are. Yeah. Uh, it's a thing like. Uh, have you guys seen 2001 a space odyssey oh yeah movie yes yeah. it's like the the ai in that how 9000 or whatever there's no i feel like there's no way to effectively create like empathy through artificial intelligence or at least we don't have the capacity to so by with the robotic thing it's like that there's sociopaths essentially there's no I cannot allow you to do that, Dave. Yeah, I don't like, know. No. I, I, I mean, I think if they have the ability to travel like through from one galaxy to the next, I feel like they're pro that you know that's like incomprehensible tech. So I think if they're capable of doing that, who's to say they're not capable of like fixing that problem? With the that robotics? is true. I, d I don't know if you can <clears throat> co like. I feel like that's something that I'm being hippie here. I feel like it's that's something that human. Yeah, like it might be just be something with actual living organic life forms because I don't know. I think you can you can like code in having something want to survive or having something want to help, but you can't code in the actual like life to life connection. Personally, yeah. but it's it's tough to say because there could be something so advanced, yeah, like you said, where it's they have that coded and they fix that problem, but I just, I don't know. my but, knee jerk reaction wasn't a great one. I was like, I think I want it to be organic because they're easier to kill, easier to fight. Mm -hmm. um, and also, we're guessing, they're not fighting on, us. We're losing. Like, there's I no, know, <laughs> I know I'm, I'm headed there. And then I also thought like, oh, with the organics, a lot of times they take a long time to be any use. Now we're talking about aliens. I don't know anything about this, but on earth, you know, big animals, they all take like, I don't know, five to 15 years to be worth a damn. So that's why I wanted organic. But like Tucker said, like, if they visit us, then there's so much more advanced that we lose. We I have like to the, hope. For I like Kyle's to imagine theory. I like to imagine that like they visit us and like they have no concept of aggression or war. And they're just <laughs> yeah. total pacifist pussies with like a ton of technology. And like they just can't even grasp the like why we keep this beating their asses and taking their iPads away from them. <laughs> They're just like, <laughs> like, like every time they send like, you can like have like, the iPad. Why are you here? Yeah, yeah, right. They, they, keep, they keep sending like you know the the fucking ramp keeps coming down and like eight of them come down and, like greetings and salutations and we just keep running up and just fucking knocking the shit out of them yeah. and like run your pockets, green man. Like, Dude, it'd be like fucking, black. It'd be like Black Friday, but with aliens like just get naked. Up and yeah, <laughs> making them like, like, like they show up in Detroit. <laughs> they're, like, they're, like, they're like they're making them get naked and do the cabbage patch. <laughs> <laughs>